humidity, all the pain we go through, people cramping up, falling out, stuff like that. You go through all that for a common goal. Everybody wants to get a national championship. Our goal was to, above all, win a conference championship, and then after that, win all of our, our, our other games. So we're in Pasadena at the end of the year. That, that's been the goal since the end of last year. I know we're going to win every single game this year. I don't know how. I don't know if it's going to be a comfort behind win. I don't know if we're going to be up, you know, 50 to zero, at, you know, at halftime. I just told them I know with the type of character we have on this team that we're going to win every single game. We've had this little burning sensation in our stomach for at least a month now, and we know that every game that we win, the stakes get higher, and we're a step closer to our main goal. But at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia, there is one team left in the way. Here they come, the Hokies of Virginia Tech. That's the major hurdle remaining for Miami. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Bob Greasy. Bob, we've seen Miami five times this year. Seems like every time we see them, they get a little bit better. And in the last two weeks, 124 to 7 over Syracuse and Washington is pretty good. They're on a roll. They're definitely on a roll, but I think they are mo motivated by the memory of last year when they didn't make it to the championship game. This team is under pressure, tremendous pressure to get back to that game. They bring it on themselves. This is a Virginia Tech team that has beaten Miami five of the last six times they've played and the last three times they played here in Blacksburg. They know how to beat them, and they've got the defense and the special teams that gives everybody fits. They're ranked number one in the nation defensively, Virginia Tech is. They're led by Ben Taylor, their All-American defensive linebacker. And this is a team that needs some turnovers to help their offense if they're going to beat Miami today. Special teams have always been special. They call it Beamer ball under this guy. Well, this is Beamer's special teams have been the best the last five or six years. They've blocked uh, 88 kicks over the last years. Nine of them, they returned for touchdowns. They need a score from their special teams today to win this ball game. A sold out crowd on a beautiful day, and we'll see some great running backs in this football game, too. Keith Burnell and the rookie sensation Kevin Jones, the freshman on the other side, Clinton Portis and Frank Gore should give us some thrills. The Canes and the Hokies coming up next. And successfully cleared. Virginia Tech is still in the way for Miami. Their Rose Bowl dreams could go by the boards if they slip up at Lane Stadium today in Blacksburg. The number one team in the country against the Hokies who are eight and two. Virginia Tech won the toss. They deferred. So John Mahler up. will tee it up. And Andre Johnson and Kevin Beard will drop back deep. Larry Coker a perfect 10 in his rookie season as a head coach of the Hurricanes. One more win. Rose Bowl and a national championship game. Mahler ups kick, a line drive. Gore, and now some confusion. Johnson touched it, he picks it up. And Andre Johnson weaves through traffic and he got across the 20. That's where Miami will go to work. Ken Dorsey, obviously a Heisman Trophy candidate. There's his numbers. Coming off another excellent game last week, a three touchdown performance, 22 scoring tosses for the year. 20 year old. Has done everything that Miami has asked him to do, but the thing they want to do right now is just ease into this game. Get the nerves settled down. Don't make any critical mistakes. They'll work from the 22 yard line. Portis, the tailback, will get the call. Portis trying to weave his way through the Hokies defenders, and he does. He is slippery. Gets out to the 28 yard line. He's got a great line in front of him. Probably the best in the business as a group. McKinney. An All-American, Wilkins, Romberg, Bibla, and Gonzalez also an All-American by the football news this week. Portis the tail. I.J. Davenport is the fullback. Johnson and Jones are starting wideouts, and Jeremy Shockey is a great tight end. Joaquin Gonzalez, one of the leaders, one of the captains. He's the right tackle. He and Shockey lined up that way. Dorsey now trying to talk to his troops. It'll be Portis again, and Portis in the clear. First down run across the 35, 
out to the 36 yard line. The Hokies defensively. Pugh is a great one inside. He and Beasley are a couple of hosses. Colas and Davis on the outside. The linebacking core. Taylor, their leading tackler. Bob talked about him. Welch, the linebacker. Daniels is more of a rover. He's only about 190 pounds. Whitaker, Pyle, McAdam, and Austin in the secondary. It's a first down. Miami on its own 36-yard line. And Dorsey's first throw of the day. Across the middle and put hands by Shockey, the tight end, all the way out near midfield. And did you see him with those meat hooks? Big, Just sucked that thing in there. Big throw and catch. First completion of the day for Dorsey. Miami's made a couple of first downs. Dorsey gets off the line of scrimmage without a hand on his back. That's a perfect throw to the outside. Virginia Tech is in the top six in every defensive category in the nation. This is a good defensive team and a very aggressive one. Pick up a 14, another first down. And now it's Portis off the left side behind McKinney and company. And he got three, almost four, before Taylor made the tackle. Our Dodge game solution, well, Bob. Miami just keep on rolling, 124 points the last two games. And defensively forced the quarterback, Grant Knoll, to beat him through the air. Special teams are special for Virginia Tech and pressure Dorsey. They got to get in, they got to make him move his feet, and they got to knock the ball loose from him and get some turnovers. Frank Beamer is 15th year here in Blacksburg, and he's done a great job with this program. Second down and seven. The Canes in Virginia Tech territory. Dorsey, the quick toss outside, and another nice catch. This one a one-hander by Daryl Jones, short of the first down, but that's two great catches, one by the tight end, now by his wideout. Well, and it's just uh, Miami knows this team. They know each other very well. Judge Jadzinski, uh, the offensive coordinator, Rob was telling us earlier in the week, they're very tough. We know them, and they know us. We know they're going to come after us. Here's Rob right here. He says, we know they're going to come after us and try to make us uh, drop the ball in the backfield. And they, they've uh, tried it already a couple of times. Dorsey getting rid of the football. Tops of the Big East on third down conversions and three wideouts on third and three for Dorsey. Throws complete to Sands. He's got a first down. He lost it. And Virginia Tech's covered it. Ben Taylor, the linebacker. And there's the turnover story that Bob started a couple of minutes ago. It's already come to fruition. There's their leader. Taylor with a fumble recovery. They're going to catch the ball. The first guy doesn't get it. And the second guy, that's 34. That's Welsh, the middle linebacker, that knocks the ball loose. He made a living on turnovers and special teams here in Blacksburg. There's the turnover margins. Miami tops in the country. Virginia Tech's in the top 10. And they get the first big defensive play of the afternoon. Here's Jones across the 40 to about the 41. Grant Knoll is the guy that had to fill the huge shoes left vacant by Michael Vick's departure to the NFL. He's done a heck of a good job with it. He has, and they don't ask him to do a lot. He's not, uh, he's at the other end of the spectrum <laughs> as far as fleet of foot. That's right. With Michael Vick, he doesn't move around much, but they don't ask him to do much. They want him to run the football and then maybe throw some deep ones. Jones got about five. On second down, they'll give it to him again. Trying to weave his way through the Miami defense. He's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. Offensively, Demasi, a former walk-on, is their leader at center. Davis, Owens, Grove, and Winsek are the front wall, and they're a good blocking unit, especially for the ground game of Jones and Ferguson. Davis and Johnson are the wideouts. Slokowski is the starting tight end, but they use two tight ends a lot. Browning win is the other. There's Jones, and he now wears Michael Vick's number, and sometimes he looks like him out there. He's quite a freshman. Third down at two. Play action, goal, plenty of time. Oh, he sailed one. Had his tight end, Slokowski, out there in the pattern, and he threw that one a mile out. He had him, and that's just uh, some nerves. No is a redshirt junior, so this is his fourth year in the program, but even the old timers have nerves. <laughs> On the 1st of December against the number one team in the country, it could happen to anybody. Vinnie Burns, number 38, set to punt. And that's Bill Buchanan back deep, and look out for him. Frank Beamer said, we're going to kick it to him. 
because we think that we can make the tackle so, on it. So we're going to kick it high to him. Well, this one ain't high, though. This is not high. It's just the opposite. Buchanan on a bounce, and he got one block. He got a crushing block on the corner, but he only got about four on the return. <laughs> what a hit that was. Chris Campbell put on, but it didn't free up his punt return, man. And Miami, the turnover doesn't hurt them. They'll get it back on offense when we come back. You can slow down investing. You can stop investing entirely. But you can't stop daughters from falling in love. Hi, Daddy. Which is why your Morgan Stanley financial advisor will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Whopper value meal at Burger King. Get a Lord of the Rings light up glass goblet, just $1.99 each. Collect all four. Never! Guys, collect all four. That doesn't mean there's only four, there's plenty. Oh. But supplies are limited. Never! Never! The adventure begins here. For men, every morning it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Yeah, I'll save. That's right. Brian Piccolo. He's fast. Real fast. Brian Song, Sunday, 7, 6 Central on ABC. Back in Blacksburg, let's check in. Third man on our team, Len Swan. Swanee. Thank you, Brad. The theme of this game is respect. Miami never thought they got enough of it at the early part of the season, and then after almost losing to Boston College, but they got it when they had convincing wins against Syracuse and Washington, the number one in everybody's book. Frank Beamer is using respect for the theme of his ball game. He says everyone's talking about Miami, what they have to do for a national championship. No one's talking about Virginia Tech and what they can do to win this ball game. He says we need to get respect, but the only place you get it is on the football field, and that's what they're going for today, Brad. No doubt about it. They already came up with a turnover to stop a Miami march, but it was three and out, and the Canes get it right back. Miami first down from the 25. And here they come. They load up. A blitz on a run, and Portis ran right into it. Brian Welch, who caused that fumble earlier, makes the tackle on Portis. And Taylor, who recovered that fumble, talked with us about, uh, you know what? Miami's not in the Rose Bowl yet. Yeah, I saw them driving up here, you know, the game day, everything. Yeah, it's kind of like they have everything set up here. They, you know, I'm sure they're packing their roses and everything like that. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, them not being able to break the cases out. <laughs> He's a throwback. He is. Second down at seven. Dorsey got hit as he threw, but he delivers a strike to Jones. And Jones stretches out. I think he got the first down. We'll check on it after we check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, thanks a lot. The Burger King update. Penn State after that 0-4 start, looking like they're going to a bowl. Zach Mills, four yards to Mike Blosser. And Blosser scores the touchdown. Penn State at 5-5. Five and five. Get the win. And Joe Paws, bowl bound. Who'd have thunk it early? Who would have thought that? Jones got the first down. And Dorsey's a perfect four for four. Dropping to throw his fifth pass. Over the middle. He's got his man. And it's Najee Davenport. And he laterals to Portis. I think it was a forward lateral, though. And Portis down to the 24. They threw a flag. There is a flag, yeah. As Miami comes up with the little ad lib there that's going to cost him. John Smith is our referee. 
Kenny Dorsey's trying to tell him ref wasn't a forward lateral. We'll wait and see. They're coming back. And that that a come back from where the point where the lateral was made. Here's a look for us. Yeah, uh, that's just forward. a little just a couple feet. This is something that they do occasionally in practice and it's frowned on by the <laughs> coaches. Kids love it. But yeah, because <laughs> most of the time it ends up in a fumble. Illegal forward pass. Offense. The penalty is from the spot of the illegal pass. Five yards. It's not a. Will be a first down. Not a serious penalty because it's only five yards from the spot, and the, you know the the uh, the chance is worth it if you uh, <laughs> if you you know if you could have got a touchdown or a long gain from it. That's the that's the player's outlook. That guy doesn't think that way. Yeah. So it's back at the 46 yard line two tight end set for the Canes. This is their second offensive possession and it's Dorsey a three step drop and Shockey again Dorsey's perfect so far and Shockey's got a first down at the 40. Well, the passing game is there. There's single coverage all over the secondary reason being the Hokies are coming after Dorsey. Not on this time, but usually the linebackers are blitzing from the middle or from the outside. The safeties or the linebackers are coming. But there are single coverage. They're taking chances that their guys can cover, or if they can, they'll knock the ball loose. So it's a first down at the 40-yard line. Nine yards a pop on first down. Nice protection and Dorsey going long. Broken up. Larry Austin at the goal line got a hand in front of Andre Johnson. That was good throw, good coverage, just a good play by Austin. And that's some of the shots that Miami needs to take. Austin is only 5'9". Little stop and go there. Johnson 6'3". The ball could have been a little bit further. I think it could have been caught maybe a little bit further, a little sooner. First incompletion. Those are the, ch are the chances that the Hokies are willing to take. Now they go back to Portis. Oh, he ran into a wall named Pew. David Pew, number 71, stood him up, and it's going to be third and long, Miami. This is a confident Virginia Tech team. Confident because of the years past, they've beaten Miami, like we said, five of six times. Miami hasn't won here since 1992, and no Hurricane player on this team has ever won on this field. And now the crowd coming to life. Three wide receiver grouping as Sands joins him in a slot. Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, looking on, hoping his Hokies can come up with a stop. They bring the house after Dorsey. Throwback screen, though, and he's got blockers in front. And it's Portis down the sideline and all the way to the 20-yard line. Great call and a great play. Everybody was coming, as you mentioned, Brad. Just roll away and throw it back. Forty is uh, Taylor, 28 is Cobb. Roll away and throw it back. Now the thing that saves us, there's only one guy left to make the tackle, and that's Austin. They had sent McAdam to the rover, and he's the guy that got the hit on Dorsey, but because of that, that left downfield open 20 yards for Portis. And now they give it to Clinton on the ground, and he gets a tough three yards as Pyle made the stop. <laughs> This this Virginia Tech team is not laying back and waiting for Miami <laughs> offensively to knock them out like they did the last two weeks. Scoring 124 points. Bud told us yesterday, Foster, he says, hey, we're going to come after. You know, and they know that. And our guys on the outside have got to do a good job covering those receivers. Lunch pail kind of guys. That's the guy that carried the lunch pail this week, which is the highest defensive honor you can have on this football team. Second down and eight, Dorsey, quick slant, complete. He still has only one incompletion, but he's still about three yards shy of the first down. Daryl Jones made the catch. There's two guys out there lined up for Miami. They both come to the inside. Wells gets back out. He's a linebacker. 
They're covering him from the inside out. If one of those guys would have just ran a fade, there'd been no, no defensive back covering the receiver. 62 yards so far and in the red zone. Miami's been in there 54 times this year and they have 37 touchdowns and 10 field goals to show for it. And we got a timeout. Taken by Miami with 623 to go first quarter. No score. The last time Miami was here, Kenny Kelly started at quarterback, since on to a baseball career, but the special teams of Virginia Tech were special. And then it was a young, lanky Ken Dorsey who came in to relief. They didn't treat him any better than they treated Kenny Kelly. And it was Virginia Tech in a romp. So far here today, Miami's controlled the game so far as Virginia Tech's had it only three plays in this quarter. And Miami's had it 15 plays for 110 yards. But a fumble negated what looked like a scoring threat the first time they had it. Now they come up to another third down and four on the 10th play of this drive. Big play here, and they're all at the line of scrimmage. There is nobody deep. Look for a blitz here. Shockey, the tight end in motion. They pump fake it to him. They go to the corner. Not quite. Off his fingertips. Nice disguise by Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator. Everybody was up there faking blitz, and everybody dropped off. Shockey's going to run to the outside and then up. It's an out and up. Whitaker sees it, as does Pyle. And neither one makes a play, but because of the coverage, he has to throw it a little long. Todd Savers is 17 of 21. Nice field goals this year. And this one's blocked. And Virginia Tech trying to cover it, and they do. They do it better than anybody in the country, and they just stopped another would-be scoring threat by the King. Well, we mentioned in the opening, 88 blocks in 15 years of Frank Beamer here at Virginia Tech. And that's the way they play it. That right in just, the middle of the pile. That was just a low kick. Yeah, Sometimes that... the reputation of a defense or a special teams can affect the kicker. He just kicked that ball low. So, Virginia Tech's offense takes over again. Pretty close to the same spot they had it last time. 88 in 15 years. You're going to add another. No. Deep middle's open. He's got his man. Ferguson, the fullback, all the way down to the 33-yard line. How about that? Ferguson, one of their top receivers when he comes out of the backfield. Here he is, the fullback. He's going to go straight down the middle of the field after the play-action fake. The safeties are helping on the outside. And this is simple. Look at this. He's got the linebacker beat Johnson. I mean, Williams, DJ Williams, right down the center of the field. 42 yards. The fullback is the second leading receiver for the Hokies. That's his 25th catch, the most ever by a fullback in Virginia Tech history. Now they go to the ground game, and Jones takes it down near the 25. And Virginia Tech's got something going. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, says we just want to get through the first quarter without any big turnovers, without any big bad things happening to us. Well, you've had a fumble all by your offense, and you've had a field goal blocked, and now you've had a big play against you on the uh, by the Hokie offense. So it remains to be seen whether they get out of the first quarter. Second down, four. Here's a little option. Jones dropped the ball. Goes and retrieves it, gets a block from his quarterback. He's off to the races. Jones inside the 20 and got leveled at the 15-yard line. He can provide some excitement. Jones was in high school last year at this time. He was one of the top recruits in the nation, and he chose Virginia Tech, makes a mistake, and then shows you the raw ability that he has. And then he meets <laughs> Mr. Reed. How about Grant Knowles' block on William Joseph? I like that. Yeah, I like that. First down, 10-yard pickup on the broken play at the 15-yard line. Both wideouts to the top of your screen. 
Wants to come back the other way out of the backfield again, and he overshot his fullback. Pretty good coverage that time by Miami. They stayed with him. Well, this is a formation they liked two weeks ago against Virginia. They put both wide receivers to the right and play action and threw the fullback back to the short side of the field. Caught a touchdown pass on that one, did Ferguson. There's what Virginia Tech's offense has done inside the 20 this year. They are at the 15-yard line, second down and 10. 4-23 to go first quarter. No score. Two big plays by the Hokies, one by their defense, one by their special teams. Miami comes with a blitz and jumps in, and Noel takes a knee, and that'll make it second down and about five. Joseph and Walters are the guys that got the biggest head start, I think, on the interior for Miami. Dead ball, offsides, defense, contact foul, five-yard penalty. Miami is, Miami's all fired up. You know, their defense hasn't done much. They're, they want to do something. They want to be aggressive. And uh, I, Cadence is a great way to pull them off sides. Miami's had three shutouts this season. Virginia Tech's had four shutouts this season. Two of the best defenses in college football. They fake the toss. They give it to Ferguson. And he gets down close to the first down. Jared Ferguson, boy, that's a tough kid. 5'9", came in as about 180-pound tailback. Now he's a 220-pound fullback. Yeah. <laughs> Gained 40 pounds. He was a walk-on when he first got here. And for that, they gave him the Excalibur Award, which is a uh, trophy they started to present about the year 2000. And it's for the guy who gets in the weight room and is the best at strength and conditioning. And I'd say, while he's still 5'9", he's a lot stronger. That sword that you get for that award is taller than he is. Third down and short. Jones trying to take it outside, probably shouldn't have. Jamal Green, defensive end, stayed with him and drops him for a loss. And that'll bring out the field goal unit for the Hokies. Michigan Jones just takes this straight up. Bobby gets first down. Well, I don't think you want to try and, and do this against Miami and their speed. Because uh, if, if, when you start inside, you, there's no time to go back outside because of the quickness of those linebackers. Carter Warley will try a 27-yard field goal. Kick down the way. And it's Virginia Tech on the board first. Miami normally scores first and then hardly ever loses. It goes the other way on their home turf. They turn a blocked field goal on one end into their own field goal on the other. Championship Series standings coming in to the weekend. Miami on top. Florida with a huge game against Tennessee today. Texas, Nebraska, Oregon. You'll see Oregon, Oregon State later on ABC. That's the top five in the BCS. Then Tennessee with their matchup with Florida. Colorado plays Texas tonight on ABC. Illinois, Oklahoma, and Stanford. That's how it looks coming in. And Miami right now, number one on every poll, except maybe the North Pole. Santa's got that one, I guess. But they're number one in both major polls and the BCS after last week. <laughs> He's and getting a lot of attention in that poll, too. He is, exactly. Here. Mahler up to kick, and Johnson and Gore back deep breaking. This is a dandy. Out of the back of the end zone. No play on that one. So Miami will work from the 20-yard line. As the girls of Virginia Tech give you a smile, we'll remind you ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. Burger King, home of the Whopper. And new Nivea for men after shave ball. More evolved skin care. Looking in on uh, Lane Stadium from above. Packed house, beautiful day. We've been looking at this December first date. Swanee and Bob and I thought we we're going to be in overcoats and gloves, and it's sunny in about 62. It's unbelievable out here. As nice a football day as we have seen all season. Miami has to be careful now offensively that they don't lose their confidence because they've had two drives. They've moved the ball well on both drives. The first ended in a fumble. The second, 10 plays and a blocked field goal. So they moved the ball, but yet we look up on the scoreboard and we say, well, we don't have any points. <laughs> That's right. Pick up a three, second down and seven at the 23. Let's see if Dorsey puts it up. He wants to. He got some pressure and he overthrew Johnson. 
Very seldom does he get touched. That was not a sack, but he got hit, and it affected his throw. Well, that's exactly what uh, Frank Beamer, Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, they want people in his face, make him move around. That's Colas 99 that had a mitt on him. And that's what they want. Third down. Three wide outs for the Canes. And Dorsey will work from the gun. Here they come. Dorsey fires. Incomplete intended for Kevin Beard. Well, what they want to do is get after Dorsey. He is the center of this offense and put pressure on him. The only game the Hurricanes have lost in the last two years, Dorsey up at the University of Washington didn't play very well. So Miami's got a kick. Freddie Capshaw to kick to Andre Davis. And he's a dangerous one. School record holder in punt returns. He'll have to wave at this one, though. Nice kick. Takes a fair catch at the 35-yard line. We'll be back after we check in. John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John. Brad, Michigan State playing to become bowl eligible facing Missouri. Jeff Smoker swings it out to Little John Flowers who takes off 42 yards. This would build a 38 to nothing lead. And it's even grown from that. Now 48 zip. Michigan State looks like will be headed to a ball. All right, John here. Three nothing Virginia Tech. Cornell now in at the tailback spot over the Hokies. And they work with good field position. Their own 35. Noel may have changed things up. He drops to throw. Getting some heat. Got the pass away, and it's complete. Noel took a shot from Chris Campbell on the blitz, but Emma Johnson made the catch. It's a smart play by Grant Noel because he saw Miami in single coverage on the outside. And when you can get that with either one of these receivers, they both have speed. Just gets it off before Campbell lowers it. So a pickup of nine, second down in the yard. Burnell, and he's got the first, and he's got more. Oh, boy, he got form tackle at the end of it, but he got a first down. James Lewis made the hit. It could be plays like this that could wake up Miami defensively if that's what they need. Lewis is in the secondary, number 23. Vilma gets blocked right there in the, in the hole, and it's Lewis who comes up, and it's tackles like that that could uh, wake up this Miami uh, defense. Virginia Tech and Miami's end of the field again, though, at the 48-yard line. Davis in motion now sets up in a slot. Here comes a blitz. They fake the end around, and that's going to take too long to develop exactly. when you got a guy like William Joseph. No, for sure. You can't do that against this. Against These linemen don't see all that other stuff. All they see is <laughs> upfield. They are coming upfield. Joseph and uh, Wilfork and the ends, Williams. I mean, they're just coming upfield. They don't. Say, ah, somebody else taking care of that other stuff. I'm getting upfield. Last six games, 21 sacks to go with the takeaways, and Joseph is the leading sacker. That's his 10th of the year and his 19th tackle for loss. He leads Miami's defense in both categories. Second down and 20 now. Draw play. Burnell trying to weave his way around and got to the 45 yard line. That's about it. And that's a good call against a defense like Miami's and a defensive line that likes to get upfield yep. because the two ends almost take themselves out of the play and you show pass and then run a little draw. That's a good play. First quarter has always been good to Virginia Tech and this one has been as well. Three nothing. The Hokies lead at the end of one. A long ways to go and the number one team in the country behind for one of the rare times this season. Virginia Tech by a field goal as we start the second quarter at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with you on a very, very important day in college football, and uh, this one part of it, Miami 
with a win would cap a perfect regular season and go to the Rose Bowl to play for the national championship. But they're behind by three as we open the second quarter. Noel across the middle. It's intercepted. Picked off by Miami. And Philip Buchanan's got this one. Buchanan has been outstanding this year, and especially in the last three or four ball games. That's Miami's 41st turnover takeaway, I should say. They lead the nation in takeaways. This was a bad choice. The fullback was wide open out in the flat with no coverage. So the Canes come up with one. There's the takeaway story. And Buchanan, that's his fifth interception of the season. And off to Portis. And Portis got to midfield, just across midfield. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Brad, you talked about the weather. I checked the farmer's almanac. It was supposed to be on December 1st, 2001, a foot of snow. I wore a turtleneck. I've got a jacket and hat in the trailer. But as you look down and you see our thermometer, it's 74 <laughs> degrees. Oh, wow. I knew it was nice. I didn't know it was that nice. Absolutely perfect. Dorsey on first down. What a catch by Shockey again, the tight end, and he's all the way to the 33-yard line. Swanee, I wanted to ask you about this in the first quarter. There's some good tight ends out there. This kid's hands, I think, separate him from everybody else. They're unbelievable. When we talked to him in Miami, Bob Greasy looked at his hands, and he's got a huge set of mitts. I mean, they're <laughs> unbelievable. So when he wraps his hands around the ball, it's hard for anybody else to get in there and take it away from him. Well, the Plus, other, he runs great routes. Yeah, and he wants the ball. He just wants every pass thrown to him, and he's a good runner after he catches it. Those were his stats coming in. He's got three catches already today. Dorsey, plenty of time. Long ball for Sands. Overshot him. In fact, it went out of the end zone. Couldn't get a play on it. Eric Green, nice coverage by the sophomore corner. Single coverage on the outside. Pressure on Dorsey in the pocket. Cobb is 28. He's not getting there, but there's somebody hitting him. Frank Beamer says, you know, Dorsey's a tough kid. At least we think he is. We don't know. <laughs> Nobody's ever hit him. Yeah, but this is the, that, that, that you've got it. Any good defense is going to get, and if you don't sack him, just get there. Knock him down. Put your hands on him. Make them know that you're there. He hit his first six. He's 9 of 14. Here's Portis on a sweep. He got the corner. He got the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. This is the thing that's so impressive about the Miami offense. Everybody talks about Dorsey in the passing game, but they actually run as well as they pass. They've scored. 24 touchdowns rushing and only 23 passing. So great balance and great running behind that offensive line. They average 210 yards on the ground per game. And that run netted him a first down. Portis has 46 yards already in the first half. He gets the call again. And Portis inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Ben Taylor, the linebacker made another stop. Our aerial views, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world sporting events for more than 75 years. Great day to be in the sky. Great day to be in the press box. Great day to be in the stands. It's a beautiful one. Great day to be at a college football game. There huh? you go. Got single coverage down here at the bottom of the screen and the top. Second quarter was big last week for the Canes. Dorsey, it's Shockey again, and he's got a touchdown. Shockey, the tight end on a crossing pattern, his fourth catch of the day. This one's good for a score. 14 yards. Rob Chubzinski, the offensive coordinator in the booth, clears it with the fullback and then brings the tight end behind him for the touchdown. And when he gets the ball, Bob, he doesn't break stride. Dorsey lays it in there perfectly, and he's allowed to keep that momentum, turn it upfield, and bowl through a couple of guys. Sievers for the point after. And he's got it up and good. So they trailed, but they didn't trail long. Buchanan's interception gave it back to the offense, and Ken Dorsey hooks up with his tight end for the seventh time this year. And it's Miami, 7-3. Miami now leading 
as they went 55 yards after the interception in six plays took them less than two minutes to get it in the end zone. Andre Davis one of the deep men for Virginia Tech and Seavers has got it teed up. So the Canes don't trail very often and they didn't trail very long in this one. And a little bit of a breeze and we'll start it all over again. Our Pontiac drive summary. There it is. 55 yards. 148. Very impressive. Shockey four catches 60 yeah. yards and a touchdown and here that in the first came, half. That came after the offense got on the field thanks to Buchanan and the defense yeah. the interception. So the offense says hey defense thank you very much for helping us <laughs> a short field. We'll take it in from here. Davis backpedals and Seaver's got a lot of leg into this one and it's going to be Virginia Tech from the 20 again. Go back and take a look at that touchdown by Shockey. Here's Shockey right here. Now watch the fullback right here. He's going to run through first, and Shockey's going to come out and then going to come back in underneath where the fullback is running. See the fullback clears it out. Shockey comes back underneath and says, I'm getting in the end zone. You ain't tackling me before I get six. There he is. Seven. Touchdowns by the offensive coordinator, Rob Trzynski, as he's passed that. He's got 10 now for his career. Noel in trouble. And that's an incomplete forward pass. He got leveled by Jerome McDougal. Miami wisely picks it up and runs with it because they didn't know, but the whistle blew. But McDougal is probably number 95 right here, is probably the quickest defensive lineman that Miami has. And he says, my responsibility is that quarterback and not letting you get outside the pocket. That was close to being a fumble. Very close. He had he has 38 quarterback hurries on the year, so you know he's getting back there and saying hello to those guys. Second down and 10 for the Hokies. And only about two for Kevin Jones. McDougal and Williams, the two defensive ends, slice in there and help make the tackle. And it's going to bring up a third down and long. 95 is McDougal. Had a little twist going on with the defensive lineman that time. Slides down the line to make the hit. Hokies haven't picked up a third down conversion in their three tries yet. And their Pontiac first and ten line is out at the 30. That's what they're working toward. Third down at seven. They fake the draw. Noel dropped it. He covered it. And it's McDougal again. It was the Jerome McDougal drive, that, <laughs> not like, the Pontiac drive. It's, exactly. It's like a jailbreak <laughs> back there. If you're the quarterback on third down, you say, boy, I know they're going to come after me. McDougal right in front of us, 95, just shoves the tackle right back in his face, slaps the ball loose. What an outstanding <laughs> series there. Wow. That was something. Benny Burns to punt. Buchanan waits on it near midfield. They got some pressure on Burns. He got a nice high spiral, though. Buchanan has a play, but he slips. At the 45, goes right down where he caught it. Good kick with a little bit of heat coming. Nice high punt of 37 yards. Here's Buchanan. He's run two touch, two punt returns back for touchdowns this year and is second in the nation in punt return average. Our Aflac trivia question. When was the last time a number one ranked football team played at Virginia Tech? You think that one over and we'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Miami now short field again only 55 yards away from the end zone. First and 10 at the 45. Gore is the tailback now. Dorsey and he has a little miscommunication with Andre Johnson. Incomplete. Swanee could tell you as easily as myself but they have rules. That may have been an out route or a slant, and, and, and the rule is if the cornerback comes up in bump and run, that turns into a fade automatically. Well, the receiver read it, read it one way and the quarterback read another. And I think he should have taken it up because the quarterback could have either laid it over the corner's head or thrown it in there. And while the receiver came back to the huddle, Dorsey was going, I wanted you to go it up, yeah. pointing down the sideline. He had single coverage out there from Ronyo Whitaker. So it's second and ten. The blitz coming. Portis. Trying to run by it, and he gets down to the 49-yard line. 
Picked up about six. Chad Beasley finally holding on to his leg brings Portis down. And we got a down Miami Hurricane. I think it's Brian McKinney. And when he falls down, the ground hurts. The big fella, 6'9, 340 pounds. The left tackle, an All American on several lists already. Oh boy, you don't want to see him go down. They've lost Haji Razuli, the left guard for the year with a knee uh, injury. And McKinney is the guy that plays right next to him at left tackle. Circle just had that, Bob, you're talking about Rosuli. He just had surgery this week. We thought maybe he'd be able to come back, but no chance now. See if Bryant got rolled up on, which happens a lot in these pileups, and he did. He got hit from behind, and they're working on his lower left leg. The play's already happened down in the right corner of the screen. It's right a here. different angle. 78. And right there. Ouch. Oh, boy. Got whipped by Colas who was trying to fly in to make a play. So they work on Bryant McKinney. We'll take a timeout, try to check on him when we come back. 11-19 to go, first half. Another look at Bryant McKinney getting rolled up on from behind. You see number 78, and there's Cole is trying to make the tackle, and his whole body goes right in to the lower part of McKinney, including his lower left leg, which is what they were working on. Yeah, it doesn't. He walked off the field. It looks like he got hit high. More than anything, I think he was shocked. There's a look at Vernon Carey. He replaced him. He went in at right tackle, and Gonzalez moved to left. Pump fake by Dorsey. Long ball. And overshot Andre Johnson. Eric Green with coverage. Dorsey again has to pick himself up after the throw. Portis got a nice block there. As they put the heat on that right side right away with a new tackle in there. Good thing about having two All-American tackles, you can flop one to one side and bring somebody else in on yeah. the right tackle. Yeah. Gatshaw's got a punt. Took a wide snap and barely got it away and got a nice kick. Hurricanes uh, not going to get through. That was a bad snap. That baby was a mile wide to the left, but he made a nice grab on it and got the kick away. We asked you the uh, Aflac trivia question a couple minutes ago. When was the last time a number one ranked football team played at Virginia Tech? Well, if you know us, you know it has to have something to do with Miami, and it does. 92, Miami was the only other number one to come into Blacksburg, and they won 43 to 23 that day. Right now they lead 7 to 3. 53 left in the first half. Usually those trivia questions has something to do with one of the two teams. Yep. Yeah, we got a we got a pattern going. If, if you if you watch our telecast, you know our pattern. <laughs> Here's a give. Jones cuts outside. Tries to anyway. And that speed again of DJ Williams and that linebacking core is too much for him. Short game. Kevin's had a heck of a season, but he hasn't seen speed like this on the defensive side of the ball from anybody else this year. Miami comes in leading the nation in scoring defense. Virginia Tech defensively comes in leading in total defense. So, and they're all inside the, the top five or six or seven in defense. So you may not see a lot of points going here today. Yep. Miami giving up less than eight points a game. Only team in the country in single digits. Here's a little bit of option, but again, takes a long time to develop, and Jones gets run down by Vilma this time. Picked up about four. Coming up next, one of college football's biggest rivalries will take over. Oregon State and Oregon. Or Notre Dame and Purdue. Some of you will see that one. And don't forget the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship is Colorado and Texas at 8 o'clock tonight. So our triple header day. Yeah, that's a playoff game tonight. We mm -hmm. got number three, Texas, against number seven, Colorado. So we're in the playoffs. Here. And this is number one, Miami. Trying to get to the big show yep. if they win today. Noel from the shotgun. Has time. Zips it out, but no gain on the play. Great play by Marquise Fitzgerald, the nickelback. Let's check in with John at Times Square Stadium. Well, Brad, Penn State trying to get to a ball, but they're not there quite yet. Zach Mills looks like he's down here, but they call this a fumble. Art Thomas picks it up and goes 92 yards for the touchdown. Down by two, they don't go for the two-point conversion. Just get the one. 
So now Penn State's lead is at 14 to 13. Brad. All right, John. Punt coming up here. Buchanan slipped the last time, and this one's taken away from him by a teammate, Eddie Reed. And Ed Reed gets the return into Hokey territory. <laughs> Buchanan sitting there, and now yeah. he's going to come over and say, Edward, you didn't hey, tell me you were going to do that. Edward Reed is the senior, and he is the, uh, the senior guy back there. He'll take him if he wants to. <laughs> he's the leader of the group. Here's Buchanan, and all of a sudden Reed says, I got it. <laughs> Reed is one of the three finalists for the Thorpe Award given to the nation's outstanding defensive back. And he was the guy that maybe made the play of the season that saved the season anyway. He likes to take things away from teammates. He <laughs> took that one away from Matt Walters yeah. and went 80 yards for a touchdown. That is how the BC game ended. Dorsey, nice play fake, throws on the run. Got his other tight end this time, Robert Williams. And Williams got about five. So the tight end's a big part of the hurricane attack today and it's working well yeah, great them. great field position for Miami offensively the last two possessions they've had the ball this one starts inside the 50 yard line of Virginia Tech it's been a season long story for Miami their field position has been excellent all year long as compared to their opposition anyway Dorsey throws high but caught Beard gets it, and he's got a first down near the 35. Let's check in with Lynn. Brad, Brian McKinney, they've been working on the sideline. It is his left knee that was hurt in the play. The doctors on the sideline checked him. They checked his right knee to see how much movement was there, and then his left knee, and they were the same. And so what they did is just asked him to walk him. They were going to take him to the locker room and check it out further, but so far he's still on the sideline. Well, sometimes you get hit from behind, and it just scares you. And you're down for a little bit, and then you realize it's nothing real serious. I'm not saying that this is that case, but sometimes that's the case. That's what you would hope for for Miami. And again, if you're just joining us, Brian McKinney, uh, one of the finalists for the Atlin Trophy, too, has uh, rolled up on there. It was not intentional. It was one of the uh, defenders, Colas, trying to make a tackle on uh, Portis and just flew right into his lower legs. And when you're working on those legs, it's like working on a cell phone tower. I mean, he's a big guy. I can imagine a cell phone tower. <laughs> I don't know. Second down and three. Dorsey. Going to go deep for Sands, who didn't look up. And incomplete, Darnell Wilds was covering. Well, one of the things that Dorsey does a good job of is just getting rid of the ball. You see a lot of quarterbacks take a sack, hold the ball too long in the pocket. He dropped back, held the ball long enough, and he says, I got to do something with it. I know I got a guy going deep. I'll just throw it away deep. And now third down and three. The crowd comes to life for the Hokie defense. If I'm not a part of that Hokie defense, I'm wondering where number 88 is. Miami's going to take a timeout. Dorsey upset that he didn't get the play quick enough. And he'll take a timeout with 7.08. Well, the reason is it's third and short yardage. Is it short yardage or is it third and two or three? Third and three. What kind of play are we going to run? You know, is it really long? Is it short? That's the reason. Brian McKinney's mom, Michelle, in the crowd here at Virginia Tech and uh, kind of made her way down, I think, to see how her baby boy was doing. They put a sleeve on his left knee, on Bryant's left knee, and uh, hopefully he's going to be able to come back. One of the things she did, she has a cell phone. I saw her. I think she's sitting in the stand. She can't hear our broadcast, but I think she called home probably to hear if we had any information about her son's injury. I love that communication technology. Najee Davenport with a first down run straight up the middle. And that's what the timeout was for. Are we going to treat this as a short yardage situation, or are we going to treat it as a third and five, a third and medium? They needed to get the first down, they picked it up. Now they go back to their regular offense at the 21-yard line. And Najee doesn't get a lot of carries. He's good as a receiver out of the backfield. But he goes straight ahead and plows for the first down. It's only his 23rd carry of the year. First down at the 21. Gore is in a tailback now. Broke one tackle, but not the other two. Whew. Man, he got pasted by Whitaker. He 
going to see some action from over to the right side. These defense are defensive backs, when that ball starts away, they're going to come back. And, and there are no, no white shirts back that way, Frank. Nope. Whitaker and Daniels were waiting for him. And uh, Hokey down is Jim Davis, their defensive end. Brad and Bob, while we have a moment, I, I think this serves uh, to prove a very important point, something we've watched about the Miami football team. In the fourth quarter of most games, their starters have been out, and their backups have had a chance to play. Some people concerned they thought Miami might be running up the score in the last couple of ball games, but they got their backups in and quality time to play good football. Now with a guy like Brian McKinney stepping out, those kinds of moments in the football game are important to the Miami program because now instead of having a very green backup coming into the play, they've got a young man who comes in with game experience and they don't lose a stride. They don't have to then shorten their offensive game plan for a substitution. And Vernon Carey, it's not like they lose any size either. He's a 265-pounder. <laughs> and Jim Davis is up. And he's limping off. He, he eats with the big eaters, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. He's one of the buffet busters. And here's Davis. Looks like his right wrist, I think. But he's a sophomore defensive end. And Adibi will come in and take his spot on that defensive front for the Hokies. Gore actually lost a yard at second down and 11. We've got 635 left first half. 7-3 Miami. Nice play fake. Dorsey throws a strike. Oh, they're going to say he's out of bounds? Yes, I guess so. Andre Johnson made the catch, but he's wide over there. Ran out of real estate on the far side of the field. Both wide receivers having their way with single coverage on the outside. Let's take a look at this. Well, it's hard to tell yeah. from that he, look. He was rolling and uh, had his left knee down, but I guess his feet were out yeah. of bounds and hit first. So now they go to the three wide receiver set on third down and 11. Here comes the heat on Dorsey. The right play is called, though. Portis all alone, and Portis. Inside the 10, it's first and goal. Oh, there was nobody outside. I mean, Virginia Tech doing the blitz thing, single coverage on the wide receivers, and a little screen pass. He just got to slide out here to the right side. They're bringing the blitz. That's Welsh, just runs by him. 34, the linebacker. Now, there's nobody out here. There's nobody out here to stop him. Bibla finally snuck out, helped him get a block right there, and that sprung him to the first and goal. Portis on the handoff. Portis inside the five, touchdown. Nice blocking, and Clinton Portis takes it in for the cane. Seven-yard touchdown for Portis, and that is his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. He really knows how to follow his blockers. He does. He? he does. And when when there's no more blocking, when the blocking runs out, he is tough to catch. He's quick and he's fast. Extra point is good. So the Hurricanes spotted the Hokies uh, field goal, but they've scored two touchdowns now, including this one. Romberg is the center. Gonzalez is 73, who moved over to the left side. Look at all the Hokies out there. They're overrunning it. Porta sees it and cuts back against the grain. While they were doing the hokey pokey, Portis took it in. in our Pacific Life game summary. Dorsey, 146 yards and a touchdown to Shockey. And that came off a Buchanan interception that started the drive. Kevin Jones has been held in check today. And a blocked kick by the Hokies led to their field goal, their only score. And that score for Miami came on a short field because of the uh, poor punt by the Hokies. Miami got the ball in good field position. So only a 47-yard drive that time, too, again. There's Portis's numbers. Already over 1,000 coming into this game. And trying to get his seventh, or rather eighth, 100-yard game of the year. He's got seven already. That drive of Miami started on their 47-yard line of Virginia Tech. 
Short field. We talk about it all the time. Took them only nine plays and two and a half minutes to score. So it's 14 to three. The Canes in front. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Chick-fil-A, home of the famous Chick-fil-A sandwich. And Aflac, ask about it at work. Ask your friends an Aflac trivia question while you're at work. There you go. Six minutes and change left first half. 14-3, the number one team in the country. And Virginia Tech now from the 20. Here's Jones. He's found it tough sledding so far today. Got two or three. James Lewis brought him down. Well, it, it seems as though the initial excitement and fervor of this ball game has kind of settled down. Mm -hmm. uh, Virginia Tech came out and, and uh, recovered a fumble and blocked a kick. Miami was kind of off their balance a little bit. Now it seems like they're, they're kind of falling back into uh, the mode of play that they want to get into, the, the Hurricanes. Second and seven, play action. Noel is intercepted. Picked off by Reed. Edward Reed has got it back to the 25-yard line. And for Reed, it's his 20th career interception as a Hurricane. That's the best in the Hurricane books. Yeah, and he read this one all the way. He saw the route, saw the quarterback, and read it. It's a two deep look, and there he goes right there. He cuts in front of the tight end. Reed read the route coming across, saw the quarterback, and like you say, picked off his 20th interception of the year, of his career. 20 career interceptions, passes Benny Blades. He was tied with him, graduated in May. Stuck around for his final senior season. The players to a man will tell you he's our leader. And the offense and defense both say that. He's the guy that stays in the locker room. He's one of the captains. He never goes out for the coin toss because he stays in and he has the final words to say to his teammates before they come out and take the field. And they're working on Ed over there on the sideline a little bit too. He was shaken up on the return. And Brad, initially the Miami team, they were going to let me stand in the locker room and listen to Ed Reed talk. But the respect that the coaches have for the players, they talked to Ed, and Ed said, I don't want to change anything in the last game of the season. Let's not have anyone come in the locker room. Especially with a wide receiver in there. He's not going to take that. <laughs> Second down eight, Dorsey to throw. Oh, Johnson just flat dropped one. Hit him right in the five, and he didn't hang on. McKinney is back in the game. Bryant McKinney, left tackle for the Hurricanes. It's good to see. And there's that sleeve they put on the left knee. Now that, that tells me that it's not very serious because they could have put a brace, they could have taped it, or they could have set him out the game. Mm -hmm. But if they just put a sleeve on it, that tells me that it was just a close call. Three wide outs and Dorsey will work from the gun on third down and long. Throws. This time it's complete. Same spot on the field. Short of the first down, though, to Kevin Beard. We'll check the measurement after we check in with John Saunders in New York. Brad, things are starting to turn against Penn State. This is Alvin Pierman of Virginia. Takes this one 16 yards right along the sidelines for the touchdown. And now Virginia has grabbed the lead over the Lions 20-14. to 14. There's still time left in the third quarter, Brad. Al Groves Virginia team was Virginia Tech's last victim. That was two weeks ago, 31-17. Seavers will try a field goal. Had one block today. This one he knocks up and good from 34 yards out. So Miami extends its lead and they get three points out of Ed Reed's interception. And Seavers in the record books just past Carlos Huerta as the Miami kicker uh, for season points, 108 with that 30 four yard field goal so 17 to 3 Miami big fella's going to go over there and adjust his sleeve there's the guys that have the touchdown the battery of Dorsey to Shockey <laughs> Shockey's right there in his face <laughs> Shockey saying hey you know I put the move on <laughs> talking to Dan Werner the quarterback coach and Dorsey he says hey I get open just I'll make a move and just throw it to me <laughs> Shockey may be from a little town in 
Oklahoma. <laughs> Ada, Oklahoma. But he's as cocky as they come. It could be cocky shocky. This kid, he's got something a little different going on with him. <laughs> well, Bob, Bob and Brad, during the game last week against Washington, when they announced that Oklahoma lost to Oklahoma State, Shockey came up to me and said, well, I guess my dream won't come true. That meaning him from Oklahoma wanting to play against Oklahoma in Pasadena. Yeah, we asked him, we said, is there a lot? There can't be that many Hurricane fans in Ada, Oklahoma. He said, well, I've, I've converted a few, but they're mostly Sooner fans in Ada. If, he, if they were uptight and feeling the pressure, they ain't, they ain't anymore, nope. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it might have been in the early going. Right. They're starting to feel their oats again a little bit. Receivers with a kick at the four and out to out the 19. So they've been kicking it over the head of Davis and now he gets a short return there and inside the 20 is where Virginia Tech's going to have to work again. Field position has been in Miami's favor. Um, all day long, all season long, I guess. So now first down, just tucked outside the 19-yard line. Knowles' last pass was intercepted. There's the field position story. Way in Miami's favor again. Here's Jones trying to slip away, and that Miami defense just won't let it. 345 left in the half, 17 to 3. And Bob, I wanted to ask you and Swanee something that I've been thinking about for about the last three weeks. You went undefeated in a NFL season. Swanee went undefeated in a college season. Is this not easy to do? No, it's not easy to do. A lot of things come into play. You play on the road. First of all, injuries, you got to have a lot of backups. But the big thing is you got to have a defense that can pull you out like they did, the, the defense did for the Hurricanes two weeks ago when they were at Boston College. When you're at Boston College and your offense is not hitting, you need a defense that's going to pull you out of there. And every every undefeated team, and there aren't many around, has got to have a great defense. Here's a give, and there's good defense again by Miami. Swanee, your 72 team, I think, for USC went undefeated, didn't you? We went undefeated, and Bob's right. The whole team, especially the defense, has to be there for you. At some point during that run, we needed our secondary, our linebacking core, every individual group within our team to make a play and get us through a ball game. And everybody stepped up at the right time. We got that little bit of luck. We almost lost a game. And in every undefeated season, every coach and player will tell you they almost lost one. What was your closest one? I think it was uh, Illinois. Back in Illinois, we were just we were tight, didn't play our game. On I think we were behind at halftime. Third down and long. No, almost intercepted again. Threw it too far in front of Davis, his intended receiver. Grease, what was your uh, closest well, call that it's year? It's not easy to win every game. I mean, you're, you know, some days you're going to run into somebody that's just going to be up and you're going to be down. Our toughest one, I think, was up in Minnesota when they had Fran Tarkington. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we didn't win. We scored on our last three possessions of the game to win something like uh, 16 to 14. Well, Miami's trying to do what Bob and Swanee have experienced, and that's go through a regular season without a blemish. And right now they've got a good head start. They lead 17 to 3. Here's Buchanan on the punt return. Broke one tackle and goes down at the 37 yard line. Yeah, this is the best against the best right here. Buchanan returning punts and Virginia Tech covered them. They they got a lot of pride. They don't want that, that guy score on them. 48 yard kick only a five yard return. And again though the field position look at it again 37 yard line. You can't beat that. They've been starting around that 40. You saw the average starting field position was a 41. So McKinney comes back out this series and Carey will go back in at the right tackle and Joaquin Gonzalez on the left side. There's the total yardage lopsided in the Canes favor and they've got 210 to work with here's Portis stopped in his tracks Jake Houseright made the tackle as we check in one more time in New York John Saunders John out of the SEC Vandy and Ole Miss and things aren't going very well for Ole Miss Greg Zolman here 50 yards to Dan Stricker and no one even gets close to him for the touchdown point after about to be kicked now Dorsey down the middle as you probably guessed the Canes went without a huddle as we went to John with that update and Dorsey whips it down to Sands at the 45 yard line third down along two 
Down to a minute 30. Remember, they used two of their timeouts earlier in this half. So they're trying to hustle into at least Seaver's field goal range if they could. Dorsey getting some heat this time. Throws on the run and too high. It's the one thing that Kenny probably doesn't do that well is throw when he's scrambling. Oh, he just got tagged, and this might be a first down. Colas just came up and popped Dorsey as he was heading to the sideline. Colas hit him late a little bit earlier that I thought should have been called, and this time John Smith, the referee, says, hey, we ain't having any of this stuff. Dorsey was walking to the sideline. He gets up, starts heading to the sideline. Now watch Colas. Boom. It actually was a harder hit than that. That looked like it was just an uh, incidental uh, collision. It was a little bit harder than that. And so Colas. After the play, we have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. The penalty is assessed from the previous spot, first down by penalty. Yeah, see, that's like a turnover because my, it was fourth down. Miami was going to come out and punt. Now the foul that Colas did gives him a first down, and they don't have to punt the football. Colas is a guy that flushed Dorsey out of the pocket in the first place, and they probably had a couple words after Dorsey had to get himself picked up again. At any rate. You're exactly right. You know, we don't have microphones on these players. <laughs> <laughs> and we're lucky. But you're, 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 you're exactly right. Here comes Here the blitz come. from the secondary, and yeah. Dorsey slows things down and yeah. changes the play. Yeah. Taylor says, forget about it, don't blitz. Dorsey has to pick it up, though, running away from Colas again. Throwing on the run and just got rid of it. And he has to do a somersault over there one more time as Housewright got over and hit him after the throw. So it's second down. This and clock stop 110. You know, this is our first trip to, Bla to Blacksburg, and I've been very impressed with everything. And, uh, the, the facilities, the coaching staff, the team, uh, Frank Beamer, uh, Bud uh, Foster, the defense. I'm impressed with their defense. Just right there, that little thing about Ben Taylor, the All-American linebacker, sees it. Waved Dorsey, it off the blitz. Yeah, waved it off. And everybody, I mean, this is a quality outfit, a quality program, playing a quality offense. Pressure again. This one's completed to Sands, though. Ethnic going to get a first down. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Miami has so many weapons at the different positions. They've got two deep at tailback that can take it anytime. They've got lots of receivers at Kate. Now you got, now you got, recognize the blitz. House right, 41 is on the blitz. He sees it, gets rid of it to Sands. And now Ethnic, who was a running quarterback in high school, just takes off. Two time state champion quarterback in high school. Coming up, reminder at halftime, Capital One Halftime Show. John and Terry will be along. Scores and highlights from all the games. A look ahead to Oregon, Oregon State, and the Big 12 Championship. All in about a minute. Dorsey. He in trouble this time and sacked for only the third time this year. They got some pressure. Jason Lallis. That's only the fourth sack given up by Miami. The third time it's been Dorsey. And it backs him out to the 26-yard line. And it looked to be that he was trying to get to his tight end. Shockey, and Shockey was double covered. And he saw it very quickly, and he says, I, there's no chance there. There aren't many times when you see Kenny Dorsey on the ground. A timeout. That's Miami's last one. They take it with 54 seconds left. And so they'll gather, and there's a couple of couple of timeout huddles going on. This is interesting. Art Keo takes his linemen, they get in a separate group, and then the quote unquote skill position guys get there's, over there. There's Art Keo right there with his offensive line. There's the big ones he's and, got around him. And there's the the skill players over there. <laughs> I think the skill guys are those big guys. I like those guys. <laughs> yeah. Coming up on Monday night, pretty good football game, too. Brett Favre and the Packers will travel down south. They'll take on Jacksonville. And Jacksonville looking for an upset. Packers and Jaguars. Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. There's Brett's numbers. He's one of the guys that I could watch play every week. Oh, and that's the truth. Yep, just fun to watch. Yep. He uh, makes it look easy and has a good time doing it. He has some fun. Now as they come out of that huddle, I think McKinney's going to come back out at one tackle. Gonzalez will get a breather, and they'll keep carrying. There's another rotating their three biggie, big guys. There's Bryant back in there. 
It is second down. Miami out of timeouts, leading by two touchdowns. 54 seconds till halftime. And it's a draw play, and Portis, oh man, Taylor hit him, and then he got leveled from on top. Taylor was there first, and then House Wright brought the house. And so it's third and long. Taylor just beats the block of Romberg, stuffs him, and just gets it. Third down and long. Dorsey, plenty of time this time. Still can't find a guy open, though. Throws on the run, way out of bounds. Good coverage by the secondary. And now a little talking going on between Ronyell Whitaker, who they say is the biggest talker on the team, and Kevin Beard, the intended receiver. Take a look. Everybody's going to go into the end zone. That's why Kenny's just running around. It was a four-deep pattern, and they had great coverage on it because everybody was jumping deep. Now watch out if you're Miami. Don't get a field goal blocked here from long range. You know you're playing against one of the best. The Seavers got it away, and from 43 yards, he got it good, too. Seavers tacks on three more. You know, Miami doesn't miss many... Uh, they're weak in many spots. They're, they're strong in the offensive line. They're strong at quarterback. They uh, got good receivers, good running backs. They've got two good kickers. Both of them will be back next year. Seavers is the place kicker. Capshaw the punter. They got defense. They got it all. They got the whole package. And they lead 20 to 3 in the second quarter in the last three games. And we've seen all three of them. Ouch. Here they spotted the Hokies a three-point lead in the first quarter, and they put 20 unanswered up. Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game is tonight. Brent and Gary and Jack will be down in Texas for what will amount to almost a, a home game for the Longhorns. They'll take on seventh-ranked Colorado. And can Colorado do to Texas what they did to Nebraska the day after Thanksgiving? That's what everybody's wondering. And Mac Brown's team, who knows? Some things could fall their way and they could find themselves in Pasadena. So it's a huge game tonight, 8 o'clock on ABC. It's if, the third of our triple header. If Miami should lose or if Florida should lose, Texas is right there. Yep. They win tonight. They they kick up. Seavers going to pooch this thing high. Wayne Ward, a backup running back, takes it at the 13. And Ward gets out. About the 29-yard line. So just a few seconds left for Virginia Tech. And we assume they're not going to try anything very fancy here. They'll go to the locker room and try to regroup and uh, make some adjustments and figure out, for one thing, they've got to get Miami on a longer field. Capital One halftime shows 11 seconds away, probably a play, maybe two. And then John and Terry will join us and uh, bring you up to date on all the other games, keeping track of that uh, Virginia-Penn State game. A look ahead to the Ducks and the Beavers and uh, the Longhorns and the Buffaloes. All that at halftime. First down, just a toss sweep. And Brunel goes out to about the 34. And everybody's going to head to the locker room. First half has gone Miami's way. The first quarter didn't, but the second quarter did. Halftime in Blacksburg. Number one Hurricanes leading. 20 to 3 as we send it to Times Square Stadium, our Capital One halftime show, John and Terry. Fellas. 87 yards of offense for Virginia Tech. They got to get something going. They do, and, and that's the weakness of their uh, entire team is their offensive production. So what they need to do to help their offense is come up with some turnovers or get a score from their special teams. Well, they got the turnovers early and blocked a field goal, but as you can see, 87 yards. 63 of that came on their one drive, and 42 of that came on one play, the pass to the fullback down the middle. Other than that, it was all Miami. Grant Knoll suffered two interceptions. Three completions, two interceptions. And uh, not a good first half for uh, anybody on the offense for Virginia Tech. Savers will kick. The Hokies get it first to open the second half. Back deep, Richard Johnson. And six yards deep, he won't bring it out. He'll take a knee. So Virginia Tech, as has been the case for most of the day, has to start from the 20 or inside. Our Morgan Stanley storyline. Kenny Dorsey, fairly efficient, 16 of 29. The touchdown was to Shockey. Reed and Buchanan both have interceptions. 
And Kevin Jones been held to 29 yards on 11 carries. That block field goal led to their field goal. And uh, as Bob was talking about, Grant Knoll has thrown two to one team and three to his own guys. Let's see how he starts the third quarter. They'll do it on the ground. Jones straight ahead, knifes for about five. Jamal Green made the tackle. And what what the Hokies have to do coming out is, all right, don't get excited. We're 17 points down, but we can't be anybody other than who we are right. offensively. We got to do what we do best. The thing I think they need to do is get the ball out to Andre Davis, their big play guy on the outside. He has barely touched it, except kick return situations today. Here's the option. Hitch to Jones. The blocker in front, and Jones has a sideline. He's got great speed. Inside the 40, makes a cutback on Reed. Reed stays with him, but he's all the way to the 20-yard line. There's the play of the day for Virginia Tech. They get their big plays in different ways. This is the option going to come right down the line. Green takes the quarterback, and there's nobody else there. There's a great block inside. Solkowski gets a nice block on the inside linebacker. Ferguson, the fullback, led the way. There's a block right here that sets up the whole play on Slokowski. 56-yard run. And first down at the 20. He gets it again. And he's got five more. So this has been the Kevin Jones show to open up the third quarter. Brad, that last play was exactly what Frank Beamer was talking about getting done as he came onto the field at halftime. He said, we had opportunities in the first half that we did not take advantage of, and we made mistakes. So in the second half, we have to just continue to take our shots. If we take our shots and make something good happen, we're not out of this ball game. That's exactly right. When you walk in that locker room, you want to say, hey, we tried everything, we emptied our saddlebags, and we got beat. But you don't want to not try something. You want to give it all you got. Two minutes ago, I was saying only this many yards for Kevin Jones, and now he's got 66 yards the last three times he's touched it. And the clock was winding down on him, and Noel has to take a timeout here. With 13.06, just a couple minutes into the third quarter, but Virginia Tech threatening. They don't want to blow an opportunity to score. They trail by 17. The Hokies threatening here early in the third quarter after the 56-yard run by Kevin Jones, who's closing in on 100 for the day. That was the longest play given up by the Hurricanes all year, by the way. Second down and six at the 15. Jones trying to slip it outside. And he's not going to get much out of this one. Maybe two. Chris Campbell, the linebacker, waiting for help from his friends, makes a stop, and it's third down. It's imperative that Virginia Tech gets something out of this drive. It would be big for them if they got seven and got back to uh, within 10 points. Chevy Trucks sponsoring our first and 10. And the line you can see is just inside the 10. That's where they need to get. Now they're 0 for 6 on their third downs today. Third down and four. Big play. Noel wants a throwback screen, but it's tipped and it's intercepted. Picked off. By William Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Jamal Green's the guy that tipped it. Joseph picks it off, and there goes the scoring threat. This is the 12th different guy that's intercepted a pass for Miami this year. Going to roll this way and try to throw back. It's a throwback screen. Everybody rolls this way. Now you got to get it back there, but that's just great awareness by a defensive tackle that knows what's going on. This is a quarterback's responsibility. So when you roll over, now you turn back. Now you don't know what you're going to see, but you've got to get the ball around or over some way. Get it back to him. What a fumble. Scooped up by Taylor, his second of the day. So the Hokies get it right back. Turnover for turnover. Ben Taylor, the lunch pail man, has got his second fumble recovery. And he just gets whacked by a couple of the Hokie tacklers. And 
looks like Pew number 71 gets his helmet right in there. Pew and Daniels. And knocks the ball out. So they only lost about four yards in one play on that change of possession. Now they got a first down at the 19. Jones trying to find a hole. Vilma drags him down, but he got four tough yards. Well, it's not surprising that we've got two of the top teams in the nation at taking the ball away. Miami came in with, uh, well, they have 40. Now they've got 43 takeaways. Virginia Tech had 32 coming in. Now they've got two. Miami's turned it over twice. Virginia Tech has turned it over three times. Second down at the 20, at the 15-yard uh, line. Second and six. Here's the toss. Jones got a block from his wideout, but he slips and Vilma's there to make sure That's he's not going anywhere. Great play by Vilma, the middle linebacker. Nobody's going to get to him. Everything was set up, but nobody got on Vilma. Here's Vilma here. The ball's going to be tossed. <clears throat> and there he is. Mano y mano. <laughs> Andrew Williams, the guy that's down right now for Miami, says a little break in the action. Here's a ground level look. Ferguson trying to get a linebacker, and Vilma's got him collared. And it's a third down and six that's upcoming. But again, Andrew Williams, the defensive end junior out of Tampa, is the guy that's down. Andrew Williams has been bothered with a knee injury the last few weeks. That's what they're working on, too, I think, Bob. It's the knee or the ankle, Brad. Um, I'm standing on the sideline looking at it. They were just kind of flexing that uh, ankle, maybe just to check out the knee. He has a brace, as you can see, on that right knee, the injury you were talking about before. Yeah, he yep. is a he is a disruptive guy. He is he's a junior college player playing this year for the first time for Miami. When Jamal Green and Cornelius Green, the two starters at defensive end last year, were hurt at the beginning of the year. Williams and uh, McDougal, the other defensive end, just took over, and the Green brothers, or the Green boys, and not brothers, <laughs> couldn't get their positions back. Third down. This has been touchy for Virginia Tech. Their third downs have been awful. Their passing game in that situation is even worse. And it's third down and six for Noel. He's got to complete a pass. Nope, doesn't have to. Draw play. Burnell cuts outside. He's got the first, and he's awfully close to the end zone. They didn't throw it, and Burnell took him down. It's first and goal. Burnell waited around, waited his turn, and when Lee Suggs got hurt early in the season, Buchanan's limping off to the sideline. Boy. Suggs got hurt early in the year. Burnell got the opportunity to play. So Burnell stays in there. Behind Ferguson, full house backfield. In a power eye, first and goal at the two. Burnell, a tough one yard. And a flag at the top. Campbell made the tackle, and we wait to see on the penalty. They say an offsides against Miami, I think. To take it half the distance to the goal, still stay first down, It'll be first and goal at the one, if that indeed is the call. Offsides, defense, the penalty is half the distance to the goal, remains first and goal. Owens. in the neutral zone. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So now it's first and goal. A yard closer at the Miami one. Ferguson, touchdown. Straight over the top for the fullback. His fourth of the year and a big, big touchdown for the Hokie. That's a huge breath of air back into this uh, Hokie football team. Now they can cut the lead down to 10 if they hit the extra point. Orly in for the point after. Easily to hold. He got it down. They got it up and good. So it was Ferguson over the top from a yard. 
And Virginia Tech right back in the thick of things. They turn the turnover into seven. There's the Virginia Tech lunch pail. They're a blue collar lunch pail defense, and that is uh, carried around by their leader, whoever has the best game two weeks ago. It was Ben Taylor, and Ben's got two fumble recoveries today. He might just fill that sucker and take it home. <laughs> he may just keep it. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's the turnovers and the points that have come from, including Taylor's fumble recovery that led to the touchdown a moment ago. 20 to 10 now. High short kick. Gore runs up on it at the 14. Remember, he's the backup tailback, and he's still on his feet, and Gore's all the way to the 42. So good starting field position again for the Canes after we check in with John in New York. Brad, the Burger King update takes a look at Army, Navy. Omari Thompson takes this kick, breaks a couple of tackles, and then shows the speed as he pulls away from the defenders. 96 yards of the kickoff return for a touchdown as Army beats Navy 26-17. Well, on this day, I think uh, we're all winners for our Army and our Navy and our Air Force. Huh? Portis, nice run. Got about 14 on the carry. So you take a short kick, you get your basically co-number one tailback to return it to the 43-yard line, and boom, your number one tailback takes it into yeah, Hokie territory. Yeah. The thing that Portis has to do is just hang on to the football because the turnover that he just gave back to uh, Virginia Tech gave him at the 19-yard line, took it in for a score, which was huge to get Virginia Tech back in this ballgame. So that's Miami on the move. Keynes at the Hokie 43 on first down. Portis again. This time he's going to lose a yard. David Pugh's had a nice game at defensive tackle. A senior out of Madison Heights, Virginia. He's disruptive. He is the top defensive guy in that defensive line. And uh, you talk about all the, the players that Miami has in the defensive line. This kid could play right there with them. And Beasley, 94, his buddy just to his left. Their roommates, their fishing buddies, and yeah. they're a load in there together. Yeah, those two inside can handle the middle. Second down and 12. I.J. Davenport moves over out of his fullback spot. That's the side that Dorsey throws to, but he overshot Shockey, and Dorsey got peppered that time as he let go. A DB made the hit on him. Our aerial views, courtesy of Goodyear and its fleet of airships, a familiar sight over major sporting events since 1925 on the wings of Goodyear. And a beautiful look in at Lane Stadium. On a gorgeous day, and now the fans sensing something. They see Miami with a third down and 12. Their team has cut the lead down to 10. And we've got 9-14 to go. A lot of football left. Dorsey will work from the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Down the middle, he overshot. Beard is intended receiver. So the Hokies hold. Fourth down. Brad and Bob, every once in a while, a little thing will happen to fire up a team. You're talking about the crowd getting into it, Brad? Yeah. The reason why they got into it, and their fans right behind the Miami bench, on the play before this last one, Dorsey tried to trip the man who hit him after the pass. And they come after the kick, but Capshaw got it away. Almost. High spiral. And Almost. Good punch. Goes Almost. out of bounds at the 11. Almost got it. Ronyel Whitaker is the guy that really got some heat in there. And, you know, they have hurried Kenny Dorsey 10 times today, sacked him once. And when we talked to Frank Beamer, he said, all you got to do is make him have happy feet. You just got to take your chances and put pressure on the quarterback and hope you get there. And, and just make him move. You don't have to sack him. Just make him move because uh, he's not used to doing that. He's used to setting his feet and having just about as long as he wants to. And uh, one way or the other, I think you got to make him move his feet. Key is, he said, you've got to take your chances. And they have taken their chances, and they have not gotten burned on the outside. Now they're going to toss it to Jones. He's been their guy this half. He slipped a little bit on his own and got back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. There's Ken Dorsey Jones on the, the sideline, a junior quarterback who's had a Williams. sensational year. Jones is going to come out, and Burnell will go back into the tailback spot for Virginia Tech. Jones a little bit shaken up, I think. He went out on the last drive, too, after he got to his 99th yard. He has now 
100 on 18 carries. 56 of it coming on one romp. That kind of started things for Virginia Tech here in this third quarter. Second down and nine. No look out. Down he goes, almost dropped in the end zone. Campbell came on the blitz, and he drops him way back at the, they're going to spot it just outside the three. Here's Campbell right here. Nobody's going to block him as he comes unabated to the quarterback. He says, hey, this is too easy. <laughs> and we can do that all day. He had an interception last week. It was a big play, and now he drops the quarterback inside the four. Not the way Virginia Tech wanted this drive to go. Now you got to be careful you don't turn it over. They are going to keep it on the ground. Safe. Brunel yep, out to close to the eight yard line. Miami should get good field position out of this. Their defense backed Virginia Tech up after the punt. And remember they've got a dangerous punt return man. And Philip Buchanan. And you know, whenever you're receiving the ball on the other side of the 50 yard line, the Hokey 50, it's almost like you're running downhill. Burns deep in his own end zone. Nice kick. Whoa. Buchanan all the way back to the 42, but he got a block. And he reverses field to midfield. Boy, did he get a crushing block. He only got eight yards on the return, but it was a good kick, 51 yards. Still, field position for Miami. They're in Hokie territory to start on offense when we come back. How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With the power of Pacific Life. For over 130 years, Pacific Life has improved the lives of millions with investments, annuities, and insurance. Because careful planning today can help them reach their dreams tomorrow. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Look, we got a lot to do today, so let's make this quick. Get what you need. We're out of here. Agreed? Yes. We know how you feel, and that's why you can shop online and pick up at a nearby store the same day, or we'll ship to you. Circuit City, we're with you. I think that went really well. Dear Kurt, how is training camp? Are you getting along with the other boys? This new chunky soup will fill you up right after a fun-filled day. No, no, no! New chunky beef rib roast with potatoes is loaded with lean chunks of savory rib roast for a taste of home while you're away. Lights out! I miss you, pumpkin. Love, Mom. <laughs> you all right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. New Campbell's Chunky Home Style Classics. Like Mom used to make. Football at 9 6 Pacific. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Blacksburg, Virginia Lane Stadium, where number one Miami leads 20 to 10. They've got the ball back after the punt. In Hokie territory by about a yard after Virginia Tech 49. That's the blitz. And Portis runs the other way. He gets. About six yards as we go to Times Square Stadium in New York, and here's John Saunders. John? Brad, Penn State against Virginia. The Lions marching for what would be a game-winning touchdown, but Zach Mills is picked off by Angelo Crowell, and that seals the victory for Virginia. They end the season at 5-7, and seven, and Penn State doesn't make a ball. Still a nice uh, comeback from what it started for Penn State. And good job for Alvaro, Virginia. 
Here's the throw quickly out to Johnson. Johnson trying to beat Whitaker over there. Beats him for the first down and uh, got it to about the 32 yard line. Pacific Light game summary in this one. You know, it's kind of an oxymoron to say this is a physical game. It's a physical game every week when you get together on a football field. But I'm telling you, we have seen some hits today and we've seen a lot of guys go down and we've seen a lot of guys come out with injuries. It's been that kind of game and Swanee. I think you probably have as good a feel or better feel than Bob and I do. We can see it's getting kind of chippy down there after the plays and stuff. It, it certainly is. And what you're getting is a lot of contact away from the action. There have been good hits at the point of contact. But all across the field, guys are taking the opportunity to take a shot. Here's Portis. And he's dropped in the backfield. Kevin McAdam says no way. Now that play had no chance. They were loaded up. They had single coverage on the outside. And, and he's... he's Decided to go ahead and run it anyway, but Foster, the defensive coordinator, this is a good defense. This is a tough defense, Miami. The number one, uh, not the number three, def three offense in the nation, averaging 45 points coming in. They knew it wasn't going to be easy sledding against these guys, and it hasn't been. Second and 13. Here's a stretch to Portis on the short side of the field. Now he's trying to cut back, and they won't let him. Coles Colas makes the tackle. Colas is not a big guy, six footer, 233. I guess he's a he's a diet Colas. Uh, yeah, the 99 you, makes you think that he's a pretty big guy, but uh, he's not at all. Makes a nice stop on Portis, he's and that's third and long again. He's six foot and about 230 pounds. He's one of those small, quick defensive ends. Miami plays it conservatively, and Portis takes it to the 25-yard line, where it's going to be fourth down and three. Be about a 42-yard field goal. And Sievers has already hit one in that range today. Now, talking with Frank Beamer yesterday, he says, we don't care who's on the field, if it's defense or special teams, it's an opportunity to score. This is an opportunity to block a kick. Sievers got it away, and he got it. So he hits from 34, 43, and now 42. And what a what a weapon he is for an offense that was struggling, but yet to get some points out of the drive. Total points in a season. It's a new record. It beats the team that scored 469 last year. So Miami has put up 471 points on Larry Coker's rookie season as head coach. And that was a big field goal. Every three you can get against this defense, you better take it. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Your Morgan Stanley financial advisor who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. AT&T, let your business, let your life be boundless. And Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. The Hokies are... 13 down again with 441 left in the third quarter. I don't care how good your defense is, and Virginia Tech, as we said, is the best in the country. You can't give a short field and expect to shut them out. Here's a kick. And Seavers again a weapon in that area, too. He knocks it eight yards deep in the end zone, and Virginia Tech again will have to work. Hold on, flags all over the place. And see what that's about and another chippy situation I think is what we were just talking about in a personal foul penalty Marquise Fitzgerald is the guy that's being uh, tapped on the helmet by his head coach and restrained by his teammates so apparently he's the guilty party after the kick dead ball personal foul kicking team 15 yards assessed from the 20 yard line, first and 10. Tell you what, the Hokies will take it because they got sick of looking at their own 20 yard line. At least they can start from the 35 here. Six times they've started from their 20 yard line or worse today. We've only had five penalties in the whole game, but that one gives Virginia Tech a little more room to work. Play action, no. Hit as he throws and almost intercepted again. 
Vilma got a hand on it. It was the pressure that caused it, though. And let's check in with John at Times Square Stadium. Brad Vanderbilt looking for their first win of the SEC season, but Eli Manning leading Ole Miss back to Jamie Armstrong here, 16 yards. Vanderbilt still has the lead, but there's plenty of time left for Ole Miss. Down 27-24, Brad. Eli Manning, what a season that young guy's had. Oh, boy. Grant Knowles not having a good day here today. Three interceptions, three completions. You don't want your completions and your interceptions matching up. Here's the option. They were big on this with Jones earlier. He got a block. He got the corner. Here he goes again. Jones down the sideline. All the way to the 26-yard line. Both, Same play. Yeah, both times, short side of the field. No receiver out there. If Miami didn't have the great speed in the secondary, he'd be gone twice. He's going to come down, watch him pitch it. He's going to come down, and he tosses it off to the end guy right here. Now watch the block right here. That's what sets it up. Ferguson, the fullback, and there's nobody there. Both times it was successful, short side of the field. And Reed came over. You saw him come into the picture in a hurry. As I said, you take away the speed, Miami's got back there at safety. This kid might have scored a couple of touchdowns. Jones says, let's run that play some more. Yep. He got 56 the first time, 40 that time. Play action. No trouble again and down, and the ball is loose. And Miami's got it. It's Will Fork. So just when they get a big play, or unless they're going to say this ball was dead or that he was down, but I don't think so. That's Miami football. Yep. That is the fourth turnover. It's not a good day for no three interceptions and then the fumble knocked loose by McDougal. Number 95 McDougal's done this before to him. I don't know that's close and DJ Williams had a play in that too. I think it might have been his hand that came in from behind. I don't know whether he was down before that ball came out or not. That was awful close. The fans obviously thought so. And it was pretty close for us on our replay. There's the turnover story. Dorsey goes to work, flips it out. Jones complete. McAdam runs him right into the first and ten marker over there. And let's take one more look at Noel on this play. See what we can see. No, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was way out. It was out. Oh, way out. I the was, shadows on the yeah, field made it kind of exactly. look like maybe his yeah, knee was it down. Was it was way out. Yeah, it was. So our second look. Uh, you know, that's one thing that the defenses are doing so much better now. Stripping. They're stripping the ball yeah. and going for it, knocking the ball loose. These two teams do it better than most. Second down in inches at the three-minute mark, third quarter. Portis. Oh, now it's going to be third down and about two. He got popped in the backfield again. David Pugh made the stop. This is a pretty good battle on this offensive defensive line with Pugh and Beasley for Virginia Tech going against that Miami offensive line. Been banged up a little bit today with the injury to McKinney, but he's been in and out of the lineup. So now third down and a long two for the Canes. Dorsey. Davenport on a crossing pattern. He threw it into traffic and he made the catch. Well, did he ever? And a flag down. Najee went in motion before the snap. He snuck it across there to him. He got sandwiched but held on, and I don't know what the penalty's about. They put it the came, ball down there, so it, it must be against Virginia it Tech. It came from the side judge, which would mean I don't think it would be a pass interference from the side judge. Pass interference <laughs> gets the defense. Spot foul. First down. That's about the first time I've seen a side judge call a pass interference over the middle center of the field. Yeah, he threw the flag 15 yards from over there. I'd say it was a good call, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a first I think down. there was some interference going on. Najee held on to it anyway, so it's a first down at the 41. Lone wide receiver is Johnson for the near side. Play fake. Dorsey wants to go to him on an out. And nice play defensively. Broken up. Darnell Wilds, they got a hand in there. Wilds, a sophomore, Florida native out of Tampa. You're right, a nice play by Wilds. 
This is a, an out pattern. The only thing Johnson may do wrong is he doesn't go deep enough because Dorsey's not ready to throw it yet. Allows time for Wilds to make up and get back inside. That's a good defensive that play. Sure was. Excellent. And guys, and guys, I'll tell you something else. Andre Johnson was on kick coverages, and he's been getting hit. We talked about those hits away from the action. He's been getting his fair share of knocks. Here's Portis. And he can't get away. It's a good defense. You're right. Well, they're playing on Miami's side of the line of scrimmage. Notice all the guys in the. On the line of scrimmage, these linebackers are playing on Miami's side. Check it out. Look at number 40. That's Taylor. He puts the gap house right. 41 is on the other side. Wells, 35. McCadden's the safety. Miami can't get back to the line of scrimmage at times. Third down and a dozen. A big play here for the Hokie defense. Dorsey, plenty of time. Fires, and Beard can't hold it. Beard slipped on his cut a little bit over there, and though the ball was in the right spot, he just couldn't quite find the handle. Yeah, and you're on the road, and that's what happens when you're unfamiliar with the field. Even though it's three quarters into the ball game, if this were at the Orange Bowl, this may not happen. Dorsey has to throw it, throws it away from the defender. That ball should have been caught. Wide snap again. Caps off, off the side of his foot. Going to bounce down inside the 20. And down to about the 17 or 18 yard line. So the Hokies have it back. They trail by 13 with a minute left third quarter. are going to extremes to get you to eat more chicken. See how in the new Chick-fil-A calendar packed with extreme sports action and $20 worth of free food. Get yours at Chick-fil-A for just $5. Don't forget the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl December 31st on ESPN. Yeah, the Blue Ridge and the Allegheny Mountains and uh, plateaued right in between Blacksburg, Virginia, Lane Stadium. I think we don't have a hard-hitting game going on. This is Capshaw, the putter after he already kicked it. And he runs by and then Manning going at it. Capshaw says, I'm the punter, leave me yeah, alone. Get me out of this. <laughs> at the 17 yard line, that's where Virginia Tech will start. Their passing game has been non-existent except throwing it to the wrong jerseys. And Brad Knowles had a good season coming into this, but not today so far. They've had to rely on the ground game. And they do here as Jones takes it out before James Lewis finally drags him down at the 22. The only time that Virginia Tech scored was when they got the ball on Miami's 19-yard line. Yep. Short field, something we talked about in the first half about Virginia Tech offensively is not that good in the nation. They're 83rd in the nation passing offense. They need help, field position, short field, and then they can score. Coming up later. Watch the option here, bud. Chevrolet players of the game. Chevy will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And Wilfork just hammered Luke Owens. And Luke <laughs> thought he got hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Wilfork. <laughs> oh, boy. Every coach we've talked about, every opposing coach this year, has talked about Miami's defense, and they go, you know, they got those ends that are quick, and they got Walters and Joseph, but they got that 75. <laughs> Everybody loves this kid. He's a true freshman. He's a true freshman, weighs 330 pounds, supposedly. That's what we're told. I saw him last night in the hotel. More like 350. At about 1030, he just left the meeting, and he had two bags of food going back to the room. <laughs> He's got a bag hanging over his <laughs> belt right there right now. But he is quick and he is good. He's never without a fork in hand or one on his jersey, I guess. 12 seconds left in the quarter. First down. Jones, and he runs into Mr. Woolfork, among others, including Campbell. And that'll do the third quarter in. So Virginia Tech is hanging in there. They know this is a team that they've beaten many times before. But the number one team in the country 
is now 15 minutes away from a trip to Pasadena. 23 to 10, Miami leads. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. An amazing statistic in the last 16 years when they lead after three only twice have they lost and Miami now is 15 minutes away from punching a ticket to Pasadena to play for the national championship but they are in a dog fight they're in a hokey fight 15 to go Virginia Tech's got the ball trailing by 13 no pump fakes one way try to come back to a screen. And Miami did a pretty nice job of blowing that up but it wasn't a good throw Lane Stadium's under construction here you can see on the uh, near side right there and it's going to be beautiful when they get that done by next year It'll be a great place I think probably to watch a football game from down there in that end zone and there's a few people over there watching the game Looks under like the a construction lot of, a lot of dirt and stuff yeah there. oh and look what you find when you look hard enough sometimes his yeah, own private suite there's going to be 15 of these when they finish and that uh, there's going to be 63,000 people that can fit into the stadium. This will increase it. And they've got some other plans, but right now I'm with the construction crew and we're hanging out. Just hanging out with the guys. They built that, what? They built that thing, Swanee, themselves, huh? Yeah, well, as you take a look at the game plan for the stadium, they're going to increase the seating there and then around the press box. So eventually they'll get up to 66,000 people here. They're going to be 15 suites here in the end zone, another 18. You know, by the old press box, but the construction crew thought there might be that one for the snow, so they <laughs> they hurried the suite. And the boys, you guys having a good time back here? Yeah. Ah. Party on, dude! Here's the punt. <laughs> Buchanan from the 30. Trying to reverse his field. Going to have an illegal block, I think, as Phillips running a long ways for nothing. Comes down at the 37 yard line and the flags over here on the near side of the field where he made his cutback. And one of his buddies trying to spring him free. I'm sure that's going to be the call. Yeah, I think it's going to be against Miami. Interesting talking to Frank Beamer yesterday who is. Yeah, holding against Miami. Frank Beamer, who has really uh, reinvented special teams over the last uh, five, ten years. The things that he had to say, the techniques that he taught, how he selected his guys for the different positions on special teams, really interesting. Sure was. Understand why he's so good at it. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Time out right here. Desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Just how much can you tap into with an AT&T broadband connection? channels of entertainment all the phone lines a house could want and oh yeah internet that flows by the gallon hope you're thirsty give a little bit give a little bit of your love to me now's the time that we need Give a little bit of my love to you. Mm -hmm. Brian 
Ryan Piccolo gave 110%. You want to see my scar? No, 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 no. But Gail Sayers set the records. Brian Song, Sunday, 7, 6 Central on ABC. Early in the fourth quarter, Miami leading 23 to 10. And they have the ball at the 27 yard line, their own 27. Gore in a tailback for the Kings. Dorsey to the air on first down. Jones and hit him in the one and he dropped it. We saw that happen to Andre Johnson earlier. Well delivered ball, but incomplete. And what, what's happening is Virginia Tech's getting everybody up around Dorsey to stop the run. You got single coverage outside. Jones is so excited he wants to catch it and turn up, and he's not catching it first. And these corners, Austin and Whitaker, are doing a nice job of making tackles out there in the open field, too. Second down at 10. Gore. Maybe a yard, that's about it. A DB came in to make first contact. Our Pacific Life game summary. Kenny Dorsey today has had some dropped on him, but he's used a lot of different guys, which has been his M.O. all season long. As he's hit guys out of the backfield, his tight end for the only touchdown pass of the day. Throwback screen to Portis that set up a score. So he's mixed it up pretty well, but his stats are not glaring or anything today. Hey, this is a good defense, and you're playing on the road in their ballpark. Three wideouts for Dorsey here. Crowd coming to life on third and nine. Here comes the blitz. Dorsey hangs in, throws, and he threw a strike this time to Beard. Oh, is that good? And That's two guys good. were right there, and he split it right between them. Flag down. It's, it's against Miami. It's a lineman downfield. I don't know why there'd be a lineman where that flag was thrown when either. the pass came 40 yards over this way and the flag was thrown on the other side of the field. Ineligible receiver downfield offense. Receiver was covered on the there line of go. scrimmage. Was covered. Five yeah. yards from the previous spot remains third down. It was shocky. It wasn't uh, lineman. It was shocky. They covered shocky. Yeah. That's that's a poor alignment. Shockey is the tight end. The flanker on the outside of him was on the line of scrimmage. You have to be off the line of scrimmage for Shockey to, to be eligible. That's it. Small things like that will drive a coach nuts. Dorsey hasn't found Shockey since that touchdown Here they come. in the second quarter. And Dorsey runs into an open field and finds Beard again. And Beard down the sideline. Did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did finally, but at about the 47-yard line of Virginia Tech. You talk about the inability of Dorsey to be able to move. He can do it here and shows it. Beard goes down, single coverage because of the blitz. Now he gets the ball, and he doesn't make the tackle, Austin. Well, Bob, you and I talked about that earlier, about the undefeated seasons, when you have to just do something you don't normally do. And while Dorsey may not scramble and run well constantly, this time he comes up with a big play to get him out of a hole. 31-yard play, in fact. Two tight ends set, one of them Williams on the move. Back to the ground go the Canes, and it's Portis in the open field. That speed. Clinton Portis, first down run, wow. he got 11 more. This is a drive that could kill Virginia Tech because it's field position. And their offense, even if they do get the ball back, they can't not capable of going 80, 90 yards. Right. Portis is going to start over here and cut back and go the other way. That's Bibla, 65. Now he just gets outside and just makes the yardage that he can get out of it. Got it down to the 36-yard line. First down. Clock running under 13 minutes. Gore takes over the tailback spot. And he'll get the call. The freshman breaks it inside the 30. And down to the 24, and he's got a first down. 12-yard ramble there. He is not an easy tackle. Let's check in with John in New York. John. Well, Vanderbilt doesn't look like they're going to get their first SEC win. Eli Manning here hooks up with Jason Armstead, 39 yards for the touchdown. That's Manning's 31st touchdown pass of the season. And Ole Miss leads Vanderbilt with about 30 seconds left, 38-27. How good's, how good's Eli going to be before he's done, huh? What is he, a junior? I think, he's, I think a junior. he's only a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. Yeah. 
And we got a timeout taken by the Hokies. And we'll take a timeout as well. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Miami holding on to a 13 point lead. It all started back in September. Larry Coker having a coach against a legend. And along the way, big plays by the defense. A near upset against Boston College, but a miracle play that saved the season as they continue their run for the Roses. They squeezed the Orange two weeks ago. They mushed the Huskies last week. And they come in 10-0 behind their veteran offensive line with a chance for a perfect Regular season now just 12 and a half minutes away and then they can set up shop in Pasadena. That's what's at stake. Dorsey play action. Throws incomplete. Yeah, good coverage. He wanted to go to Shockey and he was covered. An outside receiver was covered as well. He just threw it away. Good decision making is probably the top quality of any quarterback can have. So a second down and 10. From the 24. Any kind of score on this drive by Miami is going to look big because even if it's just a field goal, then you're talking about a Virginia Tech team that is struggling offensively, having to have two touchdowns and two two point conversions. Yeah. And that ain't likely the way things are going. Okay, he on the it's, carry. It's so tough to run against nine and ten guys at the line of scrimmage. But Miami is continuing to do it because it's the right thing to do. They don't need more points. They need they need field position now. They need to secure the football. Don't take any chances. You've got a team that does not have a good offense, a strong offense. Only way they can hurt us if just we help them. A turnover or a special teams play, something like that. Otherwise, everything's in Miami's favor right now. Third down and eight. Portis. And three wide receivers. Here comes everybody. Dorsey scans the field, throws, tipped and incomplete, almost brought down. Beard had a half step on Larry Austin, but it's incomplete. He almost caught this ball, probably should have, but I think he may have been looking back into the sun. Dorsey looks the other way and then comes back. Watch this. Almost. Hey, I, it's, ooh, boy, I want to tell you. You're absolutely right, Bob. Right yeah. down this corner, the sun is tough. Yeah. 40-yard field goal attempt. And how about Seavers today? Officially 39-yarder. You know, you can't, you talk about having an undefeated season. There are times when you're going to need a field goal kicker to put it through for you. And he's delivered all day long. He, he had his first one blocked and then put four in a row together. And, and he's a great story. Seavers is a diabetic and most of the time he wears an insulin pump. He does not wear it, told me before the Penn State game. He doesn't wear it during the game because it's, it's expensive and he's afraid it'll break in the football game. So he doesn't put it on. But just before the West Virginia game, October 25th, his insulin got a little bit off. He was actually in the hospital a day before the football game trying to get the insulin balance just right. Came out of the hospital and played in the football game. He's a tough kid and he's been a great asset for this football team. And with all that stuff happening, he's not afraid to stick his nose in. He's one of the top tacklers on the special teams. <laughs> he's not afraid to hit somebody, but he just hit a big, big 39-yard field goal. So it's 26 to 10. That capped a 51-yard drive in nine plays over three minutes. And now Todd, the guy we just talked about, has got it teed up. Richard Johnson he is back deep. <laughs> This one should be returnable for Johnson from the four. And he got himself a little alley. And there's the kicker coming over to make the hit, along with Buchanan. It's nice timing on the return. They have the opening there when the return guy gets through the hole. So a nice return and good field position, but now it's up to the Virginia Tech offense to have to get something going. Beamer says we just don't choose the fastest guy to return kicks, but a guy that can run and he has some kind of feel for the timing of the whole thing. Same way with covering punts, not the fastest, but somebody that can shed blocks and get down there. At the 43, first down. Knowles only one of nine for one yard and three interceptions since the first quarter. And the over shot up, flag flies in. 
I didn't think that was a ball that was even close to being catchable, but uh, looks like we're going to have an interference back there. Lewis and Rump were both back there with the intended receiver. With a field judge throws the flag, he is in the center of the field. Normally he calls things that are in the center of the field, but this one he threw and the uh, back judge on the side did not. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards assessed in the previous spot, automatic first down. I thought this ball was thrown so far inside that there would not be an interference because he had no play to catch it, but I guess because of the bump, you don't see them the ball in the picture, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just surprised that they haven't thrown the ball down the field to Davis more often. Yeah, me too. He's I am a... surprised by that, guys, but you know what? It's been physical downfield. I've seen plays where I thought a flag should have been thrown all afternoon, and the officials kept it in their pocket, so I'm questioning that last call. First down by penalty at the 42. Reverse. Here comes an end around, and it's Richard Johnson. And Miami stays home. And they make McDougal the stop. Again? McDougal, how about that defensive end? Just, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do here. I'm going to make the hit, and he did. With 11 minutes remaining in the ball game, an ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan driven. Beachwood Age Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Outside in Lane Stadium, we have 10:35 remaining in the ball game. Play action. Noel sets up deep middles, wide open. Got his tight end inside the 30, and still driving guys is Slokowski, and he's to the 15-yard line. Not so slow after all. He might have slow in his name, but got a little giddy up on that one. Got it down to the 15. It's a play action, so it's going to hold Williams. DJ Williams, the tight end, is going to be right in the center of the field. Slokowski is not one of your favorite targets. Only three receptions coming into the game. And that's a big one, moving the ball inside the 20-yard line. Down at the 15, first and 10 for the Hokies. Jones, great cut. Jones down to the five. Boy, what a move he put on in the backfield. What Vontek is looking at right here with less than 10 minutes to play is down by 16, and all we do a need is two scores and two two-point two, two point, uh, conversions. Watch the breaks here. Whoa, nice move. This kid's a freshman. Of course, he's played all year, so he's really not that young. He's got a lot of carries under his belt. From Chester, Pennsylvania, Bob, he was highly recruited. Matter of fact, Joe Paterno wanted them badly. And uh, Frank Beamer said, well, he doesn't always out recruit Paterno, but this time he got his man. First and goal at the five. It's the toss to Jones with blockers in front. At the corner, still fighting. Got about two yards. Again, it was McDougal who got out there and made him adjust his run a little bit. This, this kid, McDougal, is just outstanding. Whatever it takes. A little speed to the outside, but Miami's got speed also. And there's McDougal slowing him up. Reed and Campbell and Joseph finish it off. See if they show that full house backfield at Power Eye. They will again. Remember, Ferguson has their touchdown today, the fullback. They're at the three yard line, and Noel's going to call timeout. That's a good call. You need to score a touchdown on this drive. 9-0-1 remaining in the ball game. Virginia Tech will talk it over. They're knocking on Miami's door. As you can see, courtesy of our friends at Goodyear, there's fixing to be a little bit of a fight going on down there at about the goal line. It is second down and goal at the three. Ferguson Jones in the backfield. And it's Jones straight ahead. He stood up by Campbell. He didn't get to the end zone. Got to the one. Already Jones has had more yards rushing than anybody's rushed on the Canes this year. He's up to 160 yards or right about. Campbell made a great play because he was the only guy left to stop uh, Jones in the hole. And Jones is still down. 
Campbell the last couple weeks has really come on. How many that outside linebackers? How spot. many times have we seen the the trainers and the Boy. medical people on the field today? A lot. You talk about a hard hitting game. And we hope it's just the wind. And Kevin Jones, even though you've mentioned that he is a freshman, uh, he pats a wallop for a young kid. Most coaches hope the running backs when they finish after three or four years can lift about three or bench press about 350 pounds. Well he comes to Virginia Tech lifting 350 yeah. pounds and he's got great leg drive. It takes an effort for three guys to stand him up here at the goal line. And I think it was just a low hitter. Well maybe he's holding his wrist. He's holding his wrist. Last uh, game against Virginia he had 181 yards on 37 carries and that was the second highest total ever under a Frank Beamer coach team. The other guy also wore number seven. Michael Vick had a 210 yard rushing game against Boston College last year. Third and goal at the one. Burnell now in a tailback. And it's straight ahead. The fullback Ferguson touchdown. Linesman calls touchdown. The ball came out. And now wait a minute. Referee saying hold on a second. There is a flag in the end zone. All sides. Defense. Penalties are crime. Result of the play. Touchdown. So now, Burnell and out the two-point play the on two the pointers. Line. And they work on these two-point plays all the time in practice. So this is nothing new. Trying to, See, he just got in there right there. Tried to strip in. the ball from him before he got in. So whatever your best play is, you get ready for it right here because they need two and then they need another touchdown and two more. Three wide outs and a shotgun set for Noel. Everything's coming this way including the pass and it's good. He got it to him. Terrell Parham two point conversion. 26-18. Are not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. This is a popular play, whether college or pro, for two points or inside the five. It's close to whether he got in the in, in, in the end zone or not. I know his body was in, but is the ball in? Bob, I was standing on the goal line. Right when he made the catch, I thought the official was not going to give him the two points because the ball was clearly, from my vantage point, outside the goal line. His body was in, but the ball never made it in. Yeah, I looked the, from, from the uh, angles that I saw, it was pretty close, but it uh, looked to me like the ball was never in. You can't tell from this one, obviously, but... He comes down. When he comes down, Bob, you see the ball was yeah. outside the line? Yeah. It never moved forward across that line. Yeah. Nonetheless, the two points awarded Virginia Tech. And, and I'll say one thing on our Nissan drive summary, capping a touchdown run by Ferguson in two-point conversion, 57 yards in just under three minutes. We've been saying all day long Grant Knowles had an awful game. When he needed to play, yes. he got a pass in there. Well, and he moved his team down, too. Remember, they had a nice kickoff return. Then he hit his tight end. Then he hit the tight end down there. He did a nice job on that drive, getting him down. Here's a line drive kick on the bounce. Andre Johnson. Johnson with a return on to the left and out across the 25, and he gets collared out of bounds at about the 27. Don't forget, coming up in prime time tonight at 8 o'clock, Bevo will be there. Chris Sims will be there. Roy Williams will be there. Cedric Benson, having a great freshman year, will be there. But so will Gary Barnett and the Colorado Buffaloes and Chris Johnson, who had the huge game against Nebraska with six touchdowns. Can they do it again? It's the Big 12 Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. It's tonight, and it's at 8 o'clock to end our triple header Saturday on ABC Sports. Portis. Portis hammered down after a yard game. Okay, you've got, now what you've got is you've got the pressure that was not there back on Miami's shoulders because they're looking at this, they're on the road, 
The crowd's back in it. The opponent, if we give this ball up, is one touchdown away and a two-point conversion from Ty in this game. We were cruising along. We were 13 points up, 16 points up. And now, here comes that pressure back on Miami. A chance of defense from the Hokey fans. Second and nine. Play action. Dorsey wanted to go to Shockey. He got tangled up back there with Ronyo Whitaker. There's and a now a flag flies in late. The big tight end with a 5'9 cornerback. Got lost somewhere about uh, shoulder high with him. There's a look at Shockey. That jam is okay. That one is not because the ball is in the air. Pass interference against the defense. Spot foul. First down. First down Miami by penalty. Whitaker knows it too. He knows he got that last hand in there. Well, you know, and, and he says it's either that or let him go down the middle of the field and right. catch a big play or a touchdown. Only the second penalty against Virginia Tech, but it gives Miami yeah. a first down. Well, you've got single coverage out here on the wide receiver, and you've got like nine guys to stop the run. Run it, they will. Portis hit by Pugh first, I think, again. And House Wright, the linebacker. Bob and Brad, if Virginia Tech is able to stop them and get the ball back on offense, it is questionable whether or not number seven, Kevin Jones, will be of service to them in the ball game. He has a sprained right ACL shoulder. So he is sitting on the bench, and it's questionable as to whether he'll return in the ball game. The reason he was holding what we thought was his wrist was just to keep support on his arm. It's his shoulder that hurts. Next one. Second down to nine. Miami takes a timeout. The guy short out there, Bob? I think he was lined up on the wrong side. So we got a timeout with 6.58 to go. We'll be back. Seven minutes. The trip to the national championship, but Miami's clinging to this lead. This has been a tough place to play for the Miami Hurricanes. You've got to go back nine years and actually three losses mixed in there ago. And guys like Lamar Thomas and Gino Toretta and some of those familiar names from past seasons. That's the last time they won here, 92. They were number one ranked. That day, they're number one ranked this day. No current Hurricane has ever won in this field, on, on this stadium, in this field. They've lost five of the last six games to the Hokies. 53,662 looking on to see if Miami can survive this game. They didn't survive that play very well. Whitaker from the backside. Makes the stop. It's third and long. They're bringing everybody. You don't see any Hokies back here. You see Whitaker coming around the edge. He's the defensive cornerback. He's chasing the play down from the backside. It's tough to run against 10 guys. He's a little guy, but he's a fighter. And his uncle, Sweet Pea, Pernell Whitaker, a fighter as well. Miami, third down and 10. They need this play. Dorsey in trouble. Scrambles out. Finds a man across the middle, but it's incomplete. Sands couldn't hold it. And the Hurricanes have to give it up. Dorsey probably could have run for the first down. It was 10 yards. He had that much room. Take a look. He steps up. He's forced up into the pocket. I think that 10 yards, when he saw 41 house yeah. right out there, he said, you know what? He's Maybe so I can't get it. Block and a block it. kick. They got it. They got it, and they scoop it, and they're going to score it. Touchdown. Brandon Manning. Beamer ball strikes again. Eric Green is the guy that blocked it. I think he might be the injured player. Yes. He gave it up to block the kick. He got it. Manning did the rest. They still need the two points to tie the game. It's coming from the left side. Watch over here. Nobody touched him. Barely touched him. Manning get 
22 yards for the touchdown. It's the second block today. Field goal earlier. Capshaw, you saw the bobble is what cost him. Bobbled it a little bit. And here's the key play right here. This to tie. Two-point conversion attempt. Noel got the last one in. He's going to throw a fade. They tie it! Ernest Wilford! No, 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 he dropped it! He dropped it? I he, thought he had it. He dropped it? I thought he had it. The officials say no. We'll get another look. Buchanan falls down, and he's standing there by himself. Buchanan's down. Oh, he did. It went right, right through his hand. Through his arms. That's a great shot by our crew. I didn't see it the first time. Oh, my goodness. Well, the pressure was back on Miami, and they got the punt blocked. And, and Frank, Frank just goes completely down. Cannot face first. believe it. What if, what if Miami's trip to a national championship game no. is on that play? It's not on that young no, man. There's, there's too much time left. But there's I'm just six, saying, what yeah. if the end of the season, yeah. you're living right? Yeah. There's six minutes to go. There's plenty of time to kick field goals and do a lot of things. But Miami has to come out and play aggressively on offense. Yeah, they, they can't they, sit on it. They got to throw the ball outside to their wide receivers who are single cover. Mollerup's kick is a good one. I'll tell you what, Brad, college games, momentum can change so quickly, and it's definitely wearing a maroon jersey. There was the block by Green. Manning took a perfect hop, and Brandon said, I know where I'm going. I'm going to the barn with that thing, 22 yards. They're still working on the left elbow of Green. That's the thing. That ball got kicked right into that arm. Yeah. And so they work on him. Meanwhile, Miami's got to go to work from its own 20-yard line. Six minutes left. Dorsey on first down. Shockey couldn't hang on to it. And it was Whitaker there with him again. You're on the road. You're the favorite. Shockey is the guy you want to go to. This is good coverage. Right there. Had his hand on the backside, but he didn't, didn't, didn't do anything to uh, Shockey until he knocked the ball away. Remember, Shockey caught four balls early for 60 yards and a touchdown. Nothing since. This is when big players step to the front. Dorsey on second down. Jones makes the catch, but right there is McCannum. Going nowhere. Nice play by the rover back, Kevin McCannum. Out of Lakeside, California. Coming into the game, we mentioned that the special teams for Virginia Tech needed to score a touchdown, and they have. Beamer said yesterday, we want to get Miami in the fourth quarter with the pressure on them. It's They've on got them. that now. It's on them right now. Dorsey's second half has been one to kind of forget. He doesn't care about stats, I can tell you that, and he could probably care less about the Heisman Trophy, but he cares a whole bunch about January 3rd in California in the Rose Bowl, and he has made it very clear to us, and we've been with his team a lot this year, that that's been the team's goal, while the coaches may not have talked about well, it. You've got single coverage on those two receivers at the top. He looks that way on third and six. Almost intercepted. Willie Pyle comes out of the pile with an incompletion, but a forced punt coming up, and then you got to watch out for the punt again. He tried to go to Dorsey, and he tried to go to Shockey, the tight end. He's double covered. There was single coverage outside. Quickly for the punt. Both teams set up in a hurry for the kick. Capshaw. Nobody back there. Davis just gets out of the way. And this is in Miami territory. It was an awful punt. Reputations of teams that block kicks. And then when you get one blocked, Capshaw didn't get it off very well at all. Only a 26-yard kick. And Virginia Tech, with five minutes left in the game, will start 
about the length of the football in Miami territory. Here's where the punt was blocked on the left side the time before. Now they come up the center. Do you notice Green on that play came from the same spot, didn't even use his arm, but he was still back out there. First down. Burnell, oh man, is he met in the hole? I think it's Vilma. All right, what you've got here now is the Miami defense has Walters. to come out and win it again. You know, championship teams, we're talking about teams that go undefeated. We came back to the defense, where your offense is maybe going to have some pressure on them. They're not going to make plays, but it's a defense that says you're not going to score on us. And that's where Miami is right here. No gain on the last play. Maybe the length of the football. We'll call it second and ten. Burnell stays in there. Jones, remember, came out as Swanee told us with a shoulder injury. No to throw on second down. Flares it out incomplete. Burnell is fullback, intended receiver. He and McDougal got some pressure on Noel. He got dumped by McDougal. He got McDougal. That's happened to a lot of guys this year. So now the crowd is quiet. As I mentioned, Jones out with the slight shoulder problem. And now it's third and ten, and the pressure is on Grant Noel, the quarterback. Three wideouts for him, and he'll work from the gun. Down the middle he goes. Intercepted by Reed. Second of the day for Ed Reed. And Reed is just playing center field. He was throwing the ball to the receiver short, and Reed just had center field, good vision, and dove and made the interception. The same Ed Reed who snapped the ball out of the hands of his defensive tackle to save the day against Boston College might have saved the season right here on an overthrow. 48 straight starts, a four-year senior, his 21st career interceptions. He's throwing to the guy short, and Reed sees it and intercepts. On the ground, Portis out to the 36, almost the 37-yard line. 4-10 left in the game. This game is very similar to the game they played three weeks ago against Boston College. Portis fumbled the ball, gave him an opportunity to go back. You can see him holding on to the ball there. Ed Reed's 21st career interception might have been the capper to get Miami to the West Coast, but they still have 350 to survive here. Second and five. They lead by two. Portis again. And he's got the first down. Out to the 45-yard line. Make it the 46 before McAdam can bring him down. There's going to be close calls along the way. There was one at Boston College. There certainly is one here. Nebraska had theirs against Colorado and got beat. Florida had theirs at Auburn and got beat. Texas had theirs with Oklahoma and got beat. Miami is trying to avert that. Portis now joins Otis Anderson and Edwin James, some serious company, plus he's matched the single season record of Otis Anderson with his eighth 100 plus game today, and he just rips off another 14 yards. He's their money man right now, and he's playing like it. And it's Wilkins on the left side and Romberg, the center, that's doing the, uh, the heavy work up front. Wilkins has done a nice job since taking over for Haji Rizzuli, who had the knee surgery that Swanee talked about earlier. And he's fit right in there, number 72. He's a big horse as well. First down, Miami. Williams in motion, flags down. Portis cutback run, and he got about six more, but again, a penalty marker on the play. This might be a procedure call. Illegal shift call against uh, Miami. Usually two guys moving at the same time. Illegal shift, offense. Player going down to a three-point stance while players in motion. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And Bob and Brad, just a reminder to the folks at home, the clock continues to run as Miami possesses its football, and the Hokies are out of timeouts. So they don't have a chance to stop it. And it is running right now with 2.48 left. Taking their time is Miami with a two-point lead. 
Morrissey milking the clock for all it's worth. He was looking to the receiver at the top of the screen because the, the defender was about 15 yards off of him and about 10 yards to the inside. All he had to do was pick it up and throw it out there if he wanted it. Najee Davenport, I think, got his knee tangled up there trying to throw a block, and he's slow to get up. And limping, hobbling to the sideline. He's one of their offensive captains. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report. John and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the country. Of course, Oregon, Oregon State, or Notre Dame, Purdue coming up for most of you. And then the Big 12 Championship at 8 o'clock tonight. Portis. And he runs into some heavy traffic that and, time. And, and Portis knows the only chance for Virginia Tech is a turnover. The only chance for Virginia Tech to win and Miami to lose this game now is a turnover and Virginia Tech pick it up and run it in. High at top lane stadium. That's the way you feel after you hit people for three and a half hours. Your mind kind of starts moving on you. That's what it looks like inside your helmet after three and a half hours. Portis got to the 45. That's it. David Pugh made the hit. And the clock down to a minute. All right. You, you, you've, you've made your living on blocking punts for the last 10 years. Frank Beamer told us the other day you put the best people at the weakest spot who know how to block punts. He was talking about putting guys up the center because Miami had changed centers during the year. Harvey right. got hurt. Fanagrassa has been the center, but his hand has been broken. And he's been snapping. So all Miami has to do pretty much to win a national to go to the national championship game is get this punt off. 31 seconds right now. Larry Coker a half minute away from a dream rookie season as a first year head coach going to the national championship. Everybody is in for Miami. Nobody is back for Virginia Tech. The snap is vital here. It's a little high but it's clean and Capshaw gets the kick away and nobody home back there. And Miami might even be able to down it before it gets to the end zone and they do. Perfectly done with 20 seconds remaining in the ball game. Hello, Rose Bowl. Can almost set up that charter for Pasadena in a couple plays from now. Our director of productions, Bob Toms, our assistants to the producer, Chris Damiani and Marvin Watson, our associate director, Margaret Gallen, Dick Ellis normally in that spot, our associate producer, Steve Fennick, Reggie Wade's our technical director. Up in the booth, Joe Sullivan helping us on stats today, but our head of stats is Patrick McGrath. The best spotter in the business is Clint Deans. Our game directed by Steve Bime and produced by Kevin Smolin. Coordinating producer of college football is Bob Goodrich, and the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. It's all come down to 20 seconds on the regular season. No, in trouble. Down he goes. Is it a safety? Not quite. And who else? We got no way to stop the clock. McDougal. The game's over. They might get a snap here. You can't ground it in the end zone. The receiver's not back yet. And there's the flag with no time left on the clock. The receiver did not get back. This game is over. And the season, 11 wins in the regular season is over as well for Miami. They were threatened several times along the way. The was for illegal formation offense. Time has run out, game is over. And Miami is perfect at 11-0. They're going to the Rose Bowl. Good luck to the Canes. Congratulations to Larry Coker. Good job, Coach. And his staff. A perfect regular season and a tough, tough game against Frank Beamer's Hokies. And now it's on to California for the national championship for Miami. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Clinton Portis, another 100-yard-plus game, and Kevin Jones had a huge game. We hope his injury is not serious. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And you can see the emotion. Juan Gonzalez, who told us, I told him this year, 
We're going to find a way to win every game. They won every game. That's going to do it from Blacksburg. Don't forget, a lot more action coming up on ABC. Miami wins it 26-24 is the final. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. So long from Blacksburg, Virginia. Miami is national championship bound. John Saunders and Terry Bowden standing by at Times Square Stadium in New York. Have a good one, fellas. Thanks for being with us from Blacksburg. And good luck, Miami.